Good morning. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning. I don't think you can hear me. Hello? Hello? Nope. I'm muted by someone. Yes, we can hear you, Max. We can hear you, Max. Oh, all right. So we have Eka somehow. I think the Eka was coming from uh, Trinity Superior High. Um, I would say, say, can you make the computer speaker a little quieter? Maybe that would help when you speak. Now you're muted. There is no echo, but uh, when you speak, maybe that will help. Otherwise, I think we are good. So, don't be alarmed by the word broadcast. We are not. We are pressing the button broadcast, but the broadcast doesn't go to anywhere. It's a private broadcast. So the only reason to press that button is to uh, record it, and um, and then publish later with uh, uh, cutting out the personal information. So I'm, um, I've, I really like that model, and that allows me to, me and Jim and us, to create this wonderful recording to which I help in everyone. And that we are not making this for money. We are making this for you and for others who watch later. I think it is a great uh, collaboration. Uh, the, mo the model is very much after Bashar and Daryl Ankam who do a lot of paid sessions, but then publish some of them, or sell some of them. Uh, so some of them are sell, sold, some of them are published. So I think uh, this uh, this way we we would be able to pay Jim, uh, pay Kathy, by the way. Uh, Kathy is our secretary, and uh, pay me, and uh, pay the teachers who are I, I would like to invite more teachers who would uh, work for little money, but at least some hourly pay they have to, you know, we have to provide them. Otherwise, they can't really, like, take time from their other things. Welcome, everybody. I have with me, so welcome. That's um, a channeling class, and another channeling class. I think it's, like, sort of force. And we have specific topics for today. Um, we will announce them. I want to make it uh, very interactive. So we'll do some um, lecturing, but also we'll do a lot of uh, uh, questions. So grab a piece of paper and write all the questions that come to your mind so you don't forget, because it's really hard to keep them in your mind because the questions are big. And uh, bring up all the questions. We have four hours, and we'll have um, breaks. And also, and remind me about the breaks every hour. And uh, also, Jim will channel. and. Uh, um, and Wendy and Sephira, as you are channelers, I invite you also to contribute your experience, your experience of, and your fears and your pains, right? Because you know all of that is two sides. One side is, I think Jim is frozen. Jim? Oh yeah, he looks frozen there. Yeah. Or I'm maybe not. he just meditates this way. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's the, the new gym I see like these days. He got this gaze of looking up and seeing the the universe. That's 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 amazing. Looking up uh, and seeing the universe. Any comments? You good so far? We're good. Um, Wendy, uh, is Bree there? Yes, I am. Uh, hey, Bree. Uh, when I speak, the screen should be switching to me. If I do, it's not switching. It means that you clicked on yourself, and that selected you, <coughs> and that is what is recording. You have the we white box. Now you clicked mm -hmm. on G. Oh, one, 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 one. Can you unclick whatever is whatever box is there down below? I'm pretty sure you have the selected box. Can you say something? It is on you right now. Um, can you unclick? Can you uncheck? Uncheck everybody. Sure. Hold on. Yeah, we have new helper. Thank you, Bree, for um, for taking charge of the button pressing, pressing, pressing buttons, or organizing electronic buttons. Yeah. It's again, it's not moving. Uh, when I speak, it has to switch to me, and it's not. I think there is something. Similar. Max. It's all it's on you now. I don't see anybody else but you. Yeah, it, ha it has oh. been on you. Oh, okay. Then, then I guess there is bug on my side. I'm just not yeah, used. We see you all the time. Oh, really? Yes. 
I'm not used to being on on um, not administrative side. That's why maybe there is a different behavior. Usually, when I speak, I see myself, and here I see random other people. All right. Um, anyway, um, so I have with me Jit, Tinder, good morning, and Kathy. And uh, hello, everybody. Hey, Jim. Hello. On my screen, Jim is a bit uh, frozen, but I can see you moving a little bit. I mean, there is maybe some connection issues. Uh, hey, Christopher, nice to have you. Hey, um, Joanna, nice to have you. Hey, Stan. Hey, TC. Um, hey, so Trinity now. Hey, TC. Sephira, Trinity, uh, Wendy. And oh, we have separate Wendy and separate Bree. They're not in the same box anymore. Yes, Bree right. actually went home last night, and <laughs> so she's doing it from her house tonight, today, and I'm I'm at my house. <laughs> All right. Um, you're very very soft, Wendy. I can hardly hear you. Okay. Oh, I have the controls. I can make you louder. Maybe I can turn it up a little bit. I just didn't want me to. I didn't want to echo when I was talking, so I just tried. To oh, I the see. Is it yeah, that's better? a good idea. All right. Yeah. All right. I want to see someone at least. Allah Welcome, my dear, my, welcome, my beloved, to the channeling class. First thing to realize is that, to keep in mind that part of the work is you doing, and part of the part of the work is doing the spirit. So, trust the spirit to do their part of the work. You don't have to take charge of, of what is their business, what what is their work. You do your part, invite the spirit, and the rest is done by the spirit. Even if you channel extraterrestrials, it still is done through the path of the spirit. They enter through the same door and speak with the same voice. They are psychic. Some of the extraterrestrials channel Naturally, and some use technology, but anyway, they go and come to this dimension through the same door of channeling. Second thing is even more surprising, I think. Yes, it would be surprising for you, but since, but it's very logical too. When you invite the spirit and the spirit comes, the only reason it comes to you is you are your one. You reunite with them temporarily. You are made of the same substance of God, of the creator, of the source. So reuniting is easy when you just understand that you are made of the same substance. I would say more like field. It's made of the same essence, of the same field. So when you reunite with, with whatever spirit, even very distant spirit, which you never met before, you reunite because you're made of the same essence. 
So it's, the whole class would explain to you that channeling is a natural state of, hu of a human and it's easy. Otherwise, it's really hard to explain anything. Like, you know, just wake up, you're a channeler already. Now that's, that's the main realization. You are a channeler already and it, you're just returning to your natural state. So today the class is on two two points. One point is how to become a channeler, how to channel. And second, so it's like breathing in, inhale. How to inhale, get it in, do it. And second is what not to do, how to protect, how to stay safe. So positive and negative. Going forward while still protected. So I symbolize it usually. <coughs> like that. One is going forward and second is protecting yourself. Right? All like that. Going forward and protecting yourself. You don't have to move the hands like this but just the idea you always go forward and protect yourself. And sometimes protection, protection is so natural you don't really have to think about it. It becomes a second nature. Now think about um, think about chakras. Um, first three chakras are looking inside. So the first, can you see me? Yeah, first three chakras are looking inside. They are first three chakras are directed inside and higher three chakras, four chakras are looking outside into the world. The human develops from lower chakra to the higher chakras. A child is born with very strong survival chakra, the, the first chakra. And uh, the first development of the human soul is through development of that chakra. Survival, feeding, secreting, feeding, secreting, physical activity. And, and it can go for months or it can go for the lifetime. Um, that would correspond to the physical human. Ancient human and many modern humans, like workers who really do their main activity in life is physical work, and that's what they, they do well. And the next development is to start communicating. So the child, the baby starts to speak, and that's the next upgrade to the next chakra, now the chakra, second chakra, sacral chakra. And many humans on Earth do that as a main thing in their life. Low level communication and it corresponds to sales people, television, advertisement, uh, small talk, senseless talk and so on. And for these people, physical traders and warriors it's really hard to understand the spirituality on the on the high level. They understand it more like on superstition level, on the level of primitive religion. They still know about it, but but that's how they communicate because their main chakras are looking inside. They they don't have a first hand experience of of psychic energies. But uh, then the trader is upgraded to the warrior, manager, supervisor, government worker the one who can, whose main function is to push their will on others. And 
and the next upgrade is to the heart chakra. That's what the humanity is doing right now. And you do it through the lifetime. First you do physical, then you communicate, then you do, then you uh, develop your willpower, and then you open your heart. And opening your heart is empathy, love, trust, which is, you know, the work we are doing right now. You know, we all kind of are educated in a traditional system when the trust is broken. You don't trust people. You're always suspicious to people. And if you're not suspicious to people, you get hurt all the time, right? So you have to close your heart. Now, opening your heart and while still being protected is art. And channeling is opening your heart, right? Um, also, that heart, heart energy, heart chakra, heart connection is the one we use for Reiki healing. When we do our healing work, we direct the healing energy, so the spiritual energy, from the heart chakra to the palms, to the fingers, and send the energy through the hands, and receive the energy through the hands. So that's why we are saying that upper four chakras are looking at the outside world. They allow us to do something mysteriously through the spirit in the outside world. Allah Allah And the next upgrade is voice, throat chakra, fifth chakra. And that's what we use for channeling. They're the top three chakras, the throat chakra, the ear chakra, the eye chakra, and the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. It's kind of, they start dividing in between. But basically throat, third eye, and um, crown, and in betweens. And these are all different frequencies, uh, the distance from the brain. And um, that's where the spirit enters. And when you do channeling, you use all of all all of the above, all of them. Actually, all all seven. But some of them are stronger than others. Um, and 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 many people do this upgrade to the opening higher chakras. And um, it's natural for humans at this time and age to start psychic work and channeling work. The terms for channeling are many terms, but basically trans channeling is what Daryl Anka is doing channeling Bashar and Jim is doing channeling the beings, trans channeling. You actually allow the being to enter your body and Sometimes they just control your voice, sometimes they control the whole body. And Grindel is our reptilian friend. When, when he enters Jim's body, he is very uncomfortable in the body because he is bigger and he has a big tail. And uh, our friend uh, Lakesh is small, so when he enters his body, uh, Jim's body, he behaves like a small baby. He, he moves big hands as if they were like really tiny. Um, in any way, um, you don't have to do trans channeling. Uh, just regular psychic work, mediumship, um, conscious channeling. When you stay in your body, you remain conscious. Um, is sufficient. So there are usually steps. Some people jump to trans channeling right away, and some people go through smaller steps. And I'm now at the stage of when I use my chanting for channeling. So I do chant. And they allow the spirit to come through this way, and uh, it comes through through the notes, through the words, and in between the notes, between the between the notes, it's more like when I tune into certain melody or certain one note. On that purified vibration, the spirit has more opportunity to reunite with me and send me a message. So that's that's my current way of getting the answers. And I'm stay consci staying conscious in my body. And the importance here is of the tone. Basically, we are 
very discordant. All Westerners and Easterners, all modern people are very discordant, disconnected, disjointed. There is a lot of conflicting programs running at the same time. Like trust, don't trust, want love, don't want love, want love, angry, want love, offended, uh, want recognition, and trying to recognize yourself, uh, wanting recognition, and understanding that people who are not entitled to judge you, you are, you know better than them. That's, I guess, one of the major conflicts. You know, you know better. You know yourself. At the same time, you ask for recognition from others, and you understand they are not in a position to judge because they don't know you, right? My favorite John Lennon. That was his his main um, conflict with the world and a main message to the world after he became famous. He became famous fast, but after that, you don't know me, you don't see me. That's the main topic of his songs, because what you see is what you make of me, right? It's not real me. Real me is very different than what you made of me, right? You see uh, a certain idol, which is absolutely not me, right? Uh, and uh, he tried hard to find himself, and... Um, Yoko actually was the one who helped him a lot in finding himself, right? In her heavy presence, he found himself in many ways. Uh, so, so the point here is, uh, when you become a channeler of Jim's kind, usually you become a public figure. And you meet that very conflict. Do you need approval of the public? And whatever you do, you always, as a public figure, you always will step on somebody's feelings and cause some rejection. Some people will love you and some people will leave, disconnect, or send messages and so on. So, so just accept that you will have to live with that. It's impossible to satisfy everyone. So, so as John suggested, John Lennon, you know, you... Find yourself and express yourself. Shine and learn to like shine and learn to block whatever. And the more more popular you become, the more you have to do this. Shine while blocking the negative response. Uh, I think there are questions coming and comments. I invite questions and comments. Let's do a little bit of interaction. I put a lot out a lot of topics. And um, I urge you, if you're interested in the class, show your faces. Yes, it will be published, but uh, it's really nice to have that interaction and feedback. Right now, I have only photographs. So having more faces would, would help. And we're charging very really little price some for the class. Some of us just crawled out of bed, honey. <laughs> That's right. I understand. Yeah, me too. I'm still asleep. It's like sleep talking, right? But anyway, the, the, there is a contact that uh, the spirit wants me to deliver, so I, I'm I'm a channeling right now. Uh, but um, yeah, we're charging a very small price for the class, and then it's a co-creation of the recording which we publish. I think it's a great model, and um, I really love it. I want to grow big. I want to do more of that. I want other people to do more of that. It's a great format. We have local participants. We have remote participants, and the things we pronounce become transform the reality. There is, yeah, prepare your comments, but there is, a, the idea is, the message is, <clears throat> the humanity is ascending from 3D to 4D, from third density to fourth density, from third dimension to fourth dimension. Uh, the old prog program is still running. A lot of humans and a lot of souls are playing the old program of reincarnations and enjoying lower chakras, lower three chakra activities. Fight, chat, physical labor, survival. Survival is big still on Earth, right? And the humanity, part of the humanity, wants and the Earth needs to be upgraded to four higher chakras activity, which is 
love, telepathy, psychic work, communication to the spirit, um, communication with the God, um, and uh, unity. <clears throat> unity with God, unity as a, as a species. Unity with the universe, unity with other species, with other races, opening to the galactic friends, becoming a galactic planet, uh, opening the borders, becoming part of the galactic community. So there's a plan, and the main part of this plan, opening these chakras in yourself, reuniting together as with other light workers, coming together in local and remotely connected groups as we do, and channeling, sending the messages from the aliens and the spirit, establishing the contact and holding that vibration on Earth. It's very simple, very obvious, that's what we do. And soon, or maybe already, in some of the communities where there is unity and coherence, our dear alien friends and um, higher spirits will come in more manifested form and talk to us more visibly. Stephen Greer is pioneering the idea of C5, Close Encounters 5, meaning that we meditate together, invite the aliens, and they come. There is a protocol, there is a tradition for many years, you know, that's, that's the future. So the fact that you're becoming channelers may be a big decision right now, but it's natural, and we see lots of channelers being born in this community and around us, so it's a natural process. That's what we do and other races did in their time. That's, that's a normal path of ascension. That's what the species does, opening the heart, higher chakras and reconnecting with higher dimensions. So allow yourself to do that. That's, you know, that's dangerous. Personally, you lose a lot of your old stuff, but not doing that is even more dangerous. So you play with two dangers, you know, evolving and not evolving. Some people just hold forever until they're pushed. I mean, you can't really survive in lower chakra vibrations. It's painful to live in three lower three chakras. You have to raise up. Uh, on the other hand, building that energy, build, building that big vibration, requires work. It's like gardening you build higher and higher vibration. I'm now at the level between 4 and 5. 4.8, my, my 4.6 is my typical, um, fourth chakra is heart, throat chakra, 4.6 is my typical vibration at the moment. And Jim is, last time we checked a year ago, the aliens told us it was around, get a, somewhere 5 and 6, maybe 5 and 6. So, and you see Jim transforming as well. He, Jim, you share share when you're ready, but but Jim is changing. Jim is becoming more an avatar and less a, all, our old uh, human Jim. I see the features of the avatar, and you all are have that option to invite the, your higher self whenever and let them play through you. You are still there, but you invite God to play through you. You become much more a, an avatar. So that's a big, big picture. I invite the discussion now. Yes, don't be afraid to ask some questions. We'll both, we can both answer the questions. Um, go ahead. TC, do you have a question? Uh, no. Okay. No, I was having issues with the microphone because it's a little choppy, and I got disconnected oh, three times. Oh, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah no. No, I, I, I'm good. It's just that I was in and out of the uh, the Hangout because I got disconnected. <laughs> okay. Right. So, yeah. Thank, thank you. Let me, um, uh, let me say that, Max, I that was very good. I understand it. Stood everything you were saying. That was great. Uh, the last thing you were saying was about the changes that come to people that um, are channeling for a while. If they let 
if they let the spirit uh, move them and guide them and things of that nature, yes, people will start to see changes in you. Um, you may not see them in yourself right away. Other people see them in you and will tell you about them. Uh, Max is seeing changes in me. The people around me are seeing changes in my who I am. They see that some things are falling away that didn't matter anymore and that it's becoming more pure. Things are becoming a more of a pure feeling. They sense the beings in a greater and more pure way. The beings are able to get through in a way that is much more powerful. And this is what I was really uh, going for. Not that I was trying to do that but that I was asking Spirit for this kind of transformation because I think it's important at this time that we be as pure as possible in our channeling, that we be as honest. We let the uh, messages come through as clearly and as honestly as we can let them. And I've learned how to leave myself out. And that's something that's very, very important to a channel. Or when you first start to channel, you're going to be part of the channel. I don't care who you are. Um, it's never going to be 100% pure at the beginning because you're going to have some thoughts about it. You're going to have some reservations as it first comes in. So it's not going to be 100% pure right away. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't improve it vastly by, by doing a couple things. Uh, first of all, when, you, when somebody is thinking about doing a channel session, when somebody is wanting to have channeling as part of their life, you have to examine why that is. Why is it that you are interested in it? Why is it that you want this... Uh, want to be a tool for other people. Why is it that, uh, is it because there are great messages you feel that are coming, going to come through you? Is it because you feel that it is something intuitive to your life? Is it the energy that you uh, feel? You know, ex do some introspection and some meditation on why you're wanting to be a channeler because in my case I did not have that um, I did not have that I started channeling I didn't know I was going to start to channel I just started channeling but it was in a spiritual situation I was doing Reiki I was trying to do the best job possible calling on spirit to bring the best possible possible energy to the situation and boom um, a lot of you know the story that when I was working on Max all of a sudden it he asked a question and it started I won't go into all the prelim uh, preliminary of that because we both have a different recollection of how it happened but it happened and I didn't know what channeling even was so this tells you something. What does this tell you? That they can choose you sometimes. I, I felt a little frightened at first. I felt a little awkward at first. I felt like, what's going on at first? But you know what? It didn't take long for me to realize that it was of spirit and it was good information. And because... The first thing Max told me when I came around after the first channeling was, that was good information. So that was reassuring, first of all. Second of all is, they didn't possess my body in a way that they were going to stay there. They possessed it temporarily, or, or mostly just my chakra areas, so that they could get a message through, which was sort of cool. And third of all, um, I channeled with a person that knew something about channeling. Even though I didn't, he was able to set me up with 
other channelers so that I could learn what was happening. Now, since that very early beginnings, and since I know that it, it was just of the spirit, I know that, I know that now, I want to explain that there are many of you out there that will channel and be wonderful channelers because the earth needs channelers at this time and they need you to be open to the spirit open to the messages of purity open to the messages of information that is necessary for earth to continue or for earth to stabilize or for earth to balance or for earth to, to know this that or the other thing it's always something you do not necessarily have to be a, always a spiritual channeler. You can bring information in, bring technology in, bring thought processes in that are not known to humans or that if humans need to be reminded of who they are and how to grow, they teach lessons on human nature and uh, alien natures as well so it's not all about uh, one thing it's about many different kinds of messages is there any questions about that I have a question Jim if you don't mind oh sure I guess I I don't understand first off what was meant by becoming an avatar like like do you mean just in your imagination or do you mean physically in this reality becoming something different um, by definition um, avatar is um, the incarnation of God basically becoming embodying God on this earth so that's the idea you invite God to enter and God can enter as the creator or can enter as your higher self but it is still inviting God to work through you I mean, it's ideal in many religions, right? You just allow the spirit to work through you. That's the idea. Yes. Okay. I understand that, and I believe that that's something that I already embody. So if that's something that you're already doing, that first part of it, then does that mean that the channeling you receive should be from that um, prime creator? Or does right. that mean that well, you're inviting in all positive? Uh, yes, that's well, how it goes. Uh, even if you sp channel uh, a lower level being, it goes through their higher self to your higher self and back to you. Your intentions have a lot to do with who you channel and how you channel, and who you are as a person has a lot to do with what kind of channel you're go you're going to be. If you're a very positive person. If you bring in a lot of positive energy, if you believe, if your meditations are always uplifting and things of that nature, then you, you're, it, they use everything about you in their channeling. Um, they use who you are because that's what they have to use. They use your vocabulary. They use your voc, your personality, your belief in God, your belief systems. They believe uh, they use uh, as much of you as they possibly can to get their messages through because you see they don't speak your language and they don't um, uh, their language don't uh, it doesn't always have the right translations their language doesn't always have the right uh, words to say so they use your mind and find the right words to bring through to get their message out as as closely as possible now I know what you were talking about about the avatar part you do not have to feel anything differently than what you're feeling when you channel now what he was just saying is when you allow you and the the messages are coming through you you actually do change in some way and that is how you become the out you you allow the yourself to become an avatar but you do not have to feel differently you don't have to picture an avatar you don't have to 
become something different than what you are. Because when they come through you, you should be perfectly who you are. Because they are going to use who you are to bring their message across. They're not going to, they of course have their own personalities that will come through too. But they will use as much of you as you let them use. Does that make sense to you? Yes, and does that always include just um, speaking or can it also include some actions as well? Oh, definitely. You see, um, well you see how I channel. I let them use my hands, my head, my voice, my body, um, because I totally trust now. I'm very, I understand, I've been doing it for a while now, so I trust that uh, Fission, who is my, uh, my guardian, will let in the right people and that they will be saying positive messages. And so I totally trust that. And if you trust that, you can let them use anything that they want to use. If if they think that it's going to make the be uh, the message better, or if it makes them more comfortable, they will use your hands. They'll use your facial expressions. They'll use your voice in a different way, and it is all part of them being comfortable with who you are as a channeler, who you are as a person when they come to you, if you're very welcoming and hospitable to the spirits and hospitable to the aliens or hospitable to the angels, of course they're going to react in a more comfortable and a more down-to-earth way. And the more comfortable you are with uh, channeling, the greater the messages will come across because after a time, they just become natural and they start speaking exactly how they want to speak and they sort of lose track of where, what they're doing because you're giving them full, uh, giving them a chance to be exactly who they are. Do not be afraid to let them be who they are. If they want to move their hands, if they want to move their your head, I mean just let them let them be comfortable. But first of all, you have to be comfortable. I had to learn that at first because at first I was not always comfortable. The first time we did public um, a public channeling, I was really, really nervous. And when Lakesh came in, he was he was affected by how nervous I was. And he didn't and he was affected by how there was a very negative people in the audience and he was affected by all these things and so it, it wasn't the best and purest channel ever because uh, I was trying to interfere and say oh well uh, but if you let them become and become comfortable with you if you let them become who they are and do not think about where you are or what you're doing. You just have to be yourself in the sense that there's really nobody around except you're letting in a friend. You're letting in someone that is going to take care of you and not hurt you in any way, but bring a message to people that is necessary for them to grow or necessary for them to learn something or reconnect with a part of their selves that they were disconnected from. Does that answer your question more? Yes, and um, a lot of times I find myself when I'm um, outside, I'm working on my own thing, but I feel compelled to go ahead and help others a lot. Um, Wonderful. And I don't even like feel tired or sore or anything while I'm helping another person. And I wonder, is that a form of channeling as well? Yes, it is. You're channeling your spiritual energy and healing, and that is definitely a, a, something that people channel. There's so many different kinds of channeling. There's not just the physical talking channeling. There's healing channeling. 
There's empathic channeling where you can send messages to others without even speaking to them. There's many, many kinds of channeling. And sometimes there's channeling when you're just talking to somebody, a friend or whatever, and all of a sudden the message comes out differently or changes in some way and they you've given them a great message because you're open and love that person and are open to giving them that message so and it just comes forth naturally there are Thank people you, that are giving um, channeled messages constantly when they're talking to their friends or when they're talking to if they go to a Reiki share and they're talking to somebody there they'll part of their conversation may be just channeled through and they don't even realize it but God or spirit or aliens are using them to get positive messages through to other human beings so yes that is a form of channeling thank you I believe that's something that I do all the time and I just didn't realize that it was channeling so a lot of times I not, don't realize until after the conversation is over that, yes, exactly. that I've said something profound and it's really touched their heart. And, exactly. Uh, yes. I totally can't remember exactly what was said. Exactly. Okay. Max, do you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, here are a couple of stories. Basically, uh, when you allow the God to work through you, uh, sometimes you become... Uh, you don't understand what you do, but if you feel that you have been guided, you just do it anyway. One story is uh, our our dear alien abductee friend um, Rosemary. Uh, you know she worked with aliens all the time. She traveled up and down and remembered her visits. At some point, she was guided to to go somewhere and to give a message to a. Uh, chief of Indian tribe, the leader of Indian tribe. So she drove, I mean, an American driving somewhere to the reservation, finding that house with the, with the leader, you know, going through the secretary, which was his wife, she didn't want to let her in, and then delivering a message, and um, the message was very simple, peace at any price. And when she delivered the message, uh, he explained that next day they were about to make a revolution and um, shed some blood. So the message was very ti well timed and uh, made a huge difference. And the second part of the message was that he will be leading the peaceful movement and later she, she discovered that he was leading the peaceful movement. So, so the message was very profound and she was just delivering it without understanding what is happening. Um, Another story was is that the message doesn't have to be direct. Sometimes it uses, it's called reverse psychology. Like uh, our friend, uh, she was working in the banking system and uh, was pretty successful businessman. And a Pleiadian came to her in a dream or in an elevated state and told her, you know, I want you to learn banking. Oh no, I want you to learn accounting. And he was kind of clearly not saying what what he really meant, and that helped to her to realize she doesn't really want to work in a banking system and accounting. That was just just the opposite. When he said that, she said, "No, no." The spiritual experience asking me to to learn accounting was just just the opposite. The message was, "You have a better purpose in life." So you don't have to direct the mess to send the message directly. It can be it can be uh, um, customized to to the understanding of of whoever, and it doesn't have to be words. It can be anything. It can be any action. Yes. yes. Are there right, any next? other questions? All right. Are there any other questions? Did you? Yes? Yes. That is very interesting. Um, we have a question from, uh, let me scroll up here. We have a question from Joanna. 
Um, she had asked, what is blocking everyone for channeling because everyone is a natural channel anyway, as Max had yeah. mentioned? Okay, there's, there's a couple things that you can look at about being a natural channeler. Everybody has the ability to channel, but not all the channel passages are open. Why is that? Is because sometimes we block it with negativity, sometimes we block it with third dimensional life, sometimes we block it with our belief systems. If you do not believe that you are a channeler or that you can channel, it's very hard to channel because your belief system is like saying, uh, no, I can't do it. And when your belief system says you can't do it, what happens? You usually go by that. You, you have to understand that reality is all the things that you know are possible and exist. But experience is something totally different. You haven't experienced everything that's in rea reality. You may know that reality exists and that channeling exists in reality, but yet you have not experienced it or believed it yet. You may know it's in reality, but you have to bring it into your experience and your belief. So how do you do that? You do meditations. You open yourself up. You, uh, you are looking for those things that will lead you into a relationship with something beyond yourself, of course. And those that believe in God, which I believe everybody does, or most people do, are more apt to be connected to uh, beings that want to channel through you. Now, where am I going with this? They they want to open you up. They want to you to have that ability to channel. They want to bring messages through you. Why don't they? A, you might be a very, some people are negative. I don't want to say everybody's negative. I don't want to, I, I would like to believe that there's a lot of positivity in everyone. B, they may not be able to use your vocabulary skills, they may not be able to use your something about you that is essential to their message. So they look for certain people that are open to these certain things. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to be channeled by somebody else. I mean somebody else is not going to come to you that will be able to use all your skills. But they look at each individual to see who they can use the best. Now, if you are open to this, of course they're going to eventually use you. But you have to bring your beliefs and, your, and you have to experience it. Now, a lot of people say, I, I feel them around me, I know that they're there, but they're not coming through. What can I do? I feel them touch my body, I feel them touch my face. I know that they're there, but they're not coming through. You, do you believe or do you want them to come through? Some people say, I want to be a channeler, but yet they're a little bit uptight about it. They're a little bit afraid of it. They're a little bit... There are so many things involved that can stop a channel because of how people are thinking about it. But you can channel, there's a million ways to channel just as there is a million ways to think because there's a million different ways to get through the channels in your brain. Now, I know that was a little confusing. Ask no, no, it's good. Questions. it's good. Go ahead. It's good. You mentioned a lot of important things and these are all steps like meditation, like we would have to talk about meditation. Yes, meditation uh, is important. Uh, so one of the important things is it's, it's self-preservation. Like if you just go on stage and try to be Bashar, you might hurt yourself, right? It, you have to build a muscle to do the channeling, basically. You have to build your spiritual muscle. You have to build your uh, 
proper belief system and proper spiritual system. The etheric body has to ad adapt. So that's a gradual process. Like, you know, learning to fly airplane, you have to get through, pro so through the process to learn a, to fly airplane or even ride a bicycle or even walk. You have to, like, before you run, you have to learn to walk, right? So, so becoming a conscious channel or a psychic is would be the first step before like Jim was given messages before he did trans channeling so he fe he felt spirits he communicated to spirits he prayed Jim you prayed the whole life right you you always prayed you always communicated to God right yes so so um <laughs> these are usual steps again everybody is different like you come from the past lives where you're, you might have been an alien with super perfect psychic powers. Some come with very strong uh, higher chakras. Uh, and then there is blockages that you have to put on yourself to adapt to this 3D reality. So people who grow from lower chakras into higher chakras would have quite different learning path for psychic work than the people who come from alien background and adapted themselves to human reality by blocking higher chakras. For the ones who grow from below, that would be the growth process, like gardening. For the ones who go from above, like star seeds, it would be more of belief changing systems, belief systems ad adapting and unblocking the, the trauma. But um, so you have to discover for yourself where you are. Again, like diagnosing your your status of your vibration is one of the skills. Like I recently discovered that I know where I am. Like I have that experience. I communicated with these people who dragged me down, or I communicate to other people who lift me up. Right. So being among channelers among star seeds, among uh, light workers who lifts you up and you can do miracles. Then you go back home to your family and friends who are from different world and you adapt to them and you realize what was possible before is not possible anymore. So I'm not saying you don't have to go back uh, to, to the Uh oh. I think you froze. Oh, I think I'm speaking about good things. Why would they freeze me? Uh, hello, hello. Yeah, you're there now. Hello, hello. No, no, no. All right. Hear you, Max. Where, where did I stop? Yes. You said when you go back home, things would you oh. aren't the same. Right. So it's it's okay to go and communicate with lower vibrations as long as you realize what is happening and you. It's like breathing. You come back to higher vibrations, come down to lower vibrations. And it is absolutely natural to oscillate between higher vibrations and lower vibrations. And that's where meditation is wonderful. Uh, I meditate now two at least times a day and usually three, four times a day. Uh, and usually it's 35, uh, 35 minutes meditation and plus if I can allow myself another 15, 20 minutes getting out gradually, um, that allows you to recharge, reconnect to the spirit, invite the spirit. They do the work. They do the building. They, they come. I just invite them, and I feel they do the work. I feel refreshed. I feel uh, there is a lot of conscious help from other side involved. Initially, I was thinking that this work mostly aliens now I'm pretty sure these are mostly angels and spirits doing the work on my on my spiritual part and physical part so meditation is essential um, purifying yourself so <clears throat> I, I learn more and more that just single tone of OM like OM nothing else just single pure note intention to purify yourself and to connect to one pure line of spiritual line just one single line come what did it work collapsing collapsing all the complexity 
and one pure connection to God, to Divine Mother, um umbilical cord to the Divine Mother, allows yourself to lift yourself up to the higher vibration <coughs> and operate <coughs> at this higher vibration. Um. So, and that brings the idea of uh, dealing with negativity. You know, we deal with negativity all the time. And even Jim, who is very enlightened and happy, still deals with negativity. And uh, even today he deals with negativity. And you just get used to that. You recognize it, that there is negative stuff happening around. You recognize your negative perception of stuff happening around and then lift yourself up out of it. It becomes habitual nature. Like I, I tend to panic. All uh, Grace, all Yael, you know, they have that idea of panic in their race and I have that too. Like they survived uh, all, almost complete destruction of their race, the genetic degradation of their race. So that idea of the panic is, the, is, is in them. In human there, is, there was um, the fall of Atlantis, also almost complete destruction of human race. So the humans carry that um, idea of tragedy also in them, in us. So uh, lift yourself up. Lift yourself up. Recognize yes. the panic, recognize the destruction, recognize the desperation. And actually the idea of giving up is very close to channeling. <laughs> That idea of self-preservation, it works only as long as you're afraid to die. And for me, I guess, one of the biggest doers was, oh, I'm ready to die. It's just the, the suffering was so big, the suffering was so strong that I was thinking, oh, gosh, you know, dying and joining the spirit would be so wonderful. And at that time, you just say, oh, and if it is so wonderful, why don't I just, the rest of the life, I allow the spirit to speak through me much more. I still enjoy the, the, the game, but but just by accepting the death and becoming not a, less afraid of it, actually opens yourself up to the spirit. So if you become, become less afraid of death, you know, I just imagine myself dying. You, you are dying several times in your life, you know that, right? Then you get getting back to your job. <laughs> you have accidents, you die at night, blah, 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 but they bring you back. They reset the program and bring you back. That's what angels do. And um, and then you just allow the spirit to speak through yourself. So purity is absolutely essential. So it's like breathing. You go into all the complexity, all the darkness, and then when time comes, you bring back yourself into one note and invite the Creator in, invite your higher self in, um, and it does miracles. It certainly does. I, you know, when I panic, I do that, and and then I just ask that the, the, that nightmare would be resolved, and usually it does. So that works. That's you know my empirical, practical knowledge. You just pray in a very simple matter. I invite help. Like, you know, thank you, and thank already, like, you start from thanking for help, you know. Oh, that nightmare happens. I thank you, the Divine Mother, for your help. I invite more. I invite that to be resolved. I don't want to be part of that. I trust you will do that, whatever this test is. Okay, Se second thing is, so first is purity, and second thing is build your spiritual energy, build it up. Like, my level is... 4.6. I'm somewhere between that. Like that's where I, where I am most of the time. If I go down, I'm drained, so I have to take care of my physical body. I have to take care of my um, meditation, spiritual body through sleep and meditations and pra and prayers. I just can measure my vibration. And if I have to go to higher level activities, I know I will be drained. So as you grow. As Jim grows, for him, channeling is natural state. He can channel all day long because he's already above that, right? He is somewhere above that in his spiritual level. Now, if you're coming from lower level, 
from level three, then you will be much more faster drain. You still can channel, but you will be much faster drain. So you do your channeling session for whatever number of minutes, 20 minutes, then go back and regenerate, relax, take take your break, go lock yourself somewhere and take your break. Uh, like for me, like after for the first two two years of my public speaking, I would be exhausted completely for next like half a day. I would just lay flat and be sick. And um, and now I'm not, not as long at least. Usually half an hour would be sufficient. Like yesterday I had a couple of three events and um, I survived that. So, and Jim has, has even bigger capacity. So building your power, psychic power, your spiritual power up is uh, a job, a full-time job. Yeah, it is a full-time job. And being around positive people, staying positive, rejecting the negativity, taking it easy. Yeah, whatever happens, like I meet wonderful spiritual people. They are connected to God in many ways, much stronger than I. And all they think about negative things. And can I add something there? Oh, go ahead. Um, I, whenever you are serious about your channeling and know that it's coming and that it's going to be part of who you are, you naturally become more prayerful. It's, it becomes sort of natural. You start thanking God for different things. You, you're starting to say, really, please, bring integrity, bring love, because you're, you want the message to be good. You want it to be of a high quality. So it's not like you just go into it going, okay, let's just do a channel session now. You, you do a pre preparation for it. You uh, pray about it. You ask the right people to be there, the right messages to come through. And so, yes, the spiritual portion of your life does change as you start to channel. If you are serious about uh, bringing the best possible message to the world, especially, I feel very responsible because many people listen to what I have to say. So it is like before I channel anything, even a private session, I'm in prayer and meditation saying, thank you everybody for helping me and please bring the most integral messages across. Please bring what is necessary for this per this session to come through. Please guide me and direct me to keep me out of it. Not that I'm making somebody else responsible for my actions, but God will help me to keep myself at bay and, and leave the message come out or let the message come out in a way that affects the persons or person that is listening. You see, this is a message for more than one person sometimes and for just one person other times. And they can speak differently to one person than they can speak to a crowd. And so therefore, they are adept at knowing what to say. And you must prepare yourself for that. Prepare your heart and mind to be used in a way that is necessary. Now, some people were going, oh, I hear that coming out, but I'm, I have a comment to, about that as well. You should leave your comments out. Do you understand why? But I also want to back up a little bit. The, a lot of people that are trying to channel are, are doubting that they can do it. Yes, everyone can channel. But a lot of people doubt and have fears about bringing aliens into their earth spirits into their bodies. They've been taught by the church or by others that it's a bad thing to do. It's not a good thing to do. But yet, you see that it is not all bad, but yet you're, you were taught and your belief system over here says, oh no. Even though I know it's good, I've seen a lot of good come from it. It's still bad because if I do it, then my mother, my aunt, my uncle, my whoever is going to look down on me and or, or chastise me or something will happen. 
when you're going into and wanting to learn how to channel, you must be free in the spirit by saying, telling yourself, this is what I want to do because it is a positive thing to do. I want to bring a positive message to the world or to friends or to family. And I want it to be pure and honest. But do not doubt yourself because it is there. Now, sometimes it might start off as a conversation with somebody and you realize that you're channeling. And sometimes that's how you will start to channel, is that you will be talking to some, Am I frozen? No, we can't. No? no, you're not frozen. Okay, because I think uh, Max is. Um, you're going to, some people are going to start off conversationally with channeling. It's going to start off as a conversation and turn into a channel session. Has that ever happened to any of you? Yes, all the time. Yes, I didn't realize it so much, but yes, it does. What about, I heard Wendy said yes what also. About, I heard Wendy said yes also. Yes, yes, all the time. All the time it happens. Yeah. Yes. It, it happens yes, to me all the time. <laughs> yes, and so, but you see, yes. that's the beginning. That's how they want you to start. They want you to relax. They want you to Relax. They want you to be yourself. They want you to be yourself. And they want you to know that it, this is a natural process and that is not anything to be afraid of. And that's why they work that way with you to, to get you comfortable with the information that's coming through. Do you understand that? So do not doubt. Are you okay, Max? Uh, we need the bathroom break. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, doke. How long, you guys? What? Five minutes? Ten minutes? What do you want? Minutes. So now it's twenty-three. It will be thirty-three minutes. We're still. Okay, doke. Oh. Okay. Very good. We'll be back shortly. Thank you, Jim. How many minutes is the break, guys? Like three minutes. Three minutes? It's a ten minute break. We will be back at about the 33 mark. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, thank you.
Just test the microphone. Hmm. Just test the microphone. Just test the mic. Oh, nice sound. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Sounds good. Let me do a little more sensitivity. One, two, three. Hello, hello. Even better. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Same. Same. Middle is perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Hey, Max, if you can hear me, there's two of you on now. Yes, two of me, one on the phone. One, two, three, four, five. All right, welcome back. How is everybody? Great, Max. Allah naya ma Allah. Notice that somebody gives echo, you might mute them. 
and type them that they need they they could un unmute themselves so if you uh, so how do you say that um, everybody if you find yourself muted just when you speak just make sure you unmute yourself there is no offense it's just for uh, for the sound quality so some so there are some noises coming welcome everybody so um, as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> negativity, negative thinking, that's a huge part. Like, you know, the only reason we stay, we are here, the only reason we are here, Jim and I and most of us are here, because we just learn to stay positive. Otherwise, you can't really make it. If you stay in the negativity, if you stay in the fear, if your main uh, state of mind is being hurt, offended, afraid, scared, angry, <coughs> well, then, uh, then that would be the first, first thing to work on. Really like the idea of accepting the things they are and being thankful for the things they are is number one. It's like, you know, before you do all the other <laughs> meditations and uh, uh, training, you the, the main thing is to work on the positive state of mind. Really, if you are in the fear and anger, doing a channeling session or a psychic session is, uh, is not a good idea. Unless you can block it for the session and be positive and then come back. So that's what we do. You can be afraid for a short while, but as a wave, as a breathing, coming into the completely positive, blissful state of mind is the skill number one. Like, look at Jim. He is always happy, even in worst of circumstances. I have seen Jim scared, but it was a brief thing which kind of he meditated it away. Next morning or next hour, he would be good again. Um, so, yeah, my, my take on it, yeah, just to smile, you know, take it easy, relax, pray, Say Om and smile. Whatever happens, it sometimes it's really hard if it is, if it is something um, very dear to you. Like there is something very scary, and you just take a breath. Controlling your breath is one of the major skills. Take a breath, breathe deeply, meditate on the run. Meditate on the run. Sometimes you don't have like a second to do it, but Divine Mother, I invite your help and thank you for your help and smile like as if the resolution already happened you know that skill of getting into the Buddha happy state no matter what is is skill number one for the channeler any comments yeah any questions <clears throat> hi Max hi Jim um, I do I do yes. want to say oh go ahead Oh, no, go, go ahead, ahead Bundy. Go right ahead, please. Um, I just had a few comments, so if you want to go ahead and say something, um, go ahead, Jim. I can hardly hear you. Hear you. Oh, here, let me turn it up. You're very, very soft. Okay, is that a little better? Yep. Oh, that's better. Okay, okay good. I just didn't want to cause an echo. I didn't want it to be too loud. <clears throat> Everything you said in the last hour has been amazing because you've basically answered all my questions that I and validated kind of everything um, that I have already been experiencing. So, um, and have been able to articulate sometimes. Um, so, Max, I like the way you did the. I don't even know how to explain it. They, how you ex, you explain the experiences of, you know, how you want love and then you get it, but then when you get it, you feel like you don't deserve it. There's that all of that going on with all of this too. Um, if I'm happy, I'm gonna hurt my camera because my head is kind of wacky. Uh, if you get love and you feel like you don't deserve it, do you know what to do? You say thank you. You say <laughs> thank you very much. I love you very much. And even though you don't deserve it, they're giving it to you. It's a blessing. It's a gift. 
and so accept yeah. it and just say thank you and don't don't uh, internalize it to the fact that you're you're saying oh that's I just don't deserve it I just don't uh, no just accept it it's a gift it's the, they love you they want you to have it or else you wouldn't have it and therefore right. I know a lot of people go through that they don't want to accept it because they feel like don't deserve it but guess what God is part of your soul God created your soul out of part of himself and he wants you to have it because it's good for his soul too it's good for that part of him that is there because God is in each and every one of you and if you say I don't deserve it then you you're saying you don't deserve God and God is already part of you so you do deserve it you are part of God you may not have done anything to deserve it as you might think but just having God within you is it is letting you know that you are deserving of greater things does that make sense to you oh absolutely and it, it's just something that I think a lot of channelers are well a lot of spiritual people come run into is you know you it's, it's humility <laughs> it's beautiful yes, exactly it's very humbling and I actually came from it from a little bit different experience in that I grew up always believing I could talk to the angels I've always grown up believing that I was that everything is connected and that um, and and that everything should be peaceful and harmonic and so all my life I, I vibrated in that harmonic vibration of I always was the peacekeeper you know right um, and so I think that those of us who grow up with that don't realize that you kind of are channeling all your life because then and I always felt like I had a message to bring like really and a very important message to bring to humanity all my life and so I expressed it in poetry for me cool. it was writing it was it was automatic writing it was poetry and so I just wanted to reiterate to people that that is channeling also you know uh, all of that song lyrics um, and when I and when I do galactic languages it actually puts me into that like vibration of that place of like pure energy pure source energy I don't know even know how to describe it and even coming into this hangout today when I'm with you guys as soon as I come into the room I don't even know how to describe it it's like I become very it's it's a combination of being emotional but grounded but yet like so high vibration it's so emotional for me sometimes I can't even speak um, it's very it's a very interesting experience for me um, and I don't really hear a lot of people talk about that aspect of it but for me it's always very emotional um, and it brings you back into that the memory even of the last couple of hangouts and the Reiki sessions and to mm -hmm. Kirk coming through and um, Usui, all of it, just being in being in the memory of that vibration brings us, brings me back into that vibration. And that's part of what channeling is too, is bringing ourselves back to that vibration to allow that energy to flow through us. And it is completely about belief. If you don't believe it, it won't work. Um, and following your instincts. Following your instincts is channeling too. Um, even the other day, I did a tarot card reading just for myself. Um, tarot card reading is another form of channeling. It's information coming through from the spirits world, you know, for that person. And I got the message. Well, thank you, to send Wendy, it. for that. <laughs> and I was just saying, I got the message to send it to Val, and I wanted to bring it up because one of the cards that was drawn for Val and I I actually pulled I did this reading for me <laughs> me alone yet the whole time I'm doing the cards I keep hearing Valerie 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 so this is also for Valerie this also applies to Val I actually took a picture of the reading I sent her all picture all the cards what they all meant what order to read them in because one of the messages in there too was you're a healer even when you don't when you're not aware of it 
And again, that's channeling. When she, when you're out there helping people, Val, you're channeling your 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 energy of source. So, and and then the other side of that is I followed my instincts to send her that information because my spirit guides were telling me we're all guides to each other, and so I'm channeling this information, and they're telling me this is really going to be important for her to uh, to hear and it was so it and so that's your, why i said uh, you know. thank you wendy yeah <laughs> so you're, it was you're very welcome important. and um i find too that part of that reading was about um listening and being one of the elementals and um yes. i am and i yes, can fully <laughs> embrace that now so i just didn't um really embrace it i guess uh, but i do now and it was very very helpful Wow. And um, I spent yesterday doing just that, being being an elemental in Aww. in every way, and with the earth, and <laughs> and and just a beautiful experience. And I'm finding that that is opening me up to even more love. That it is. is out there, yes. and it's beautiful. And I wasn't. I wanted to. And the, and I love what you guys said about fear too, because fear is paralyzing. And so many times, even in the last couple of years, even knowing all these all these wonderful people, even even a couple of months ago, I would have hesitated to send that to her because I'd be like, well, you know, it, it, am I making it up? Is it really, you know? And this and now, I don't even question it. If I get the if I get that information. And I also am very careful about the trust of the information, like you said, Jim, wanting it to be pure, kind of keeping myself, but yet there is always going to be that little bit of element that is you because part of your vibration, and they're matching your vibration, <laughs> that entity is. So, and Daryl does start to look like Bashar. I mean, after all yeah. these years, he really is starting to look like his counterpart. Trinity would like to share something. Go ahead, Trinity. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So along with that, um, sometimes I feel like my emotions get in the way of channeling, like um, along the lines of what Wendy was saying. But if I'm about to channel, or if I know, like somebody asked me to do a private channeling, and I said yes, but then I couldn't do it because I was going through so much turmoil, <clears throat> in my life and emotionally and also there was a time when I was hurt by just about everything and everybody I was constantly hurt so <laughs> I felt like oh my goodness these poor these poor uh, aliens who want to come through um, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of like there's mud you know, there's a muddy kind of cloud around me and they can't although they did anyway at times but I always blocked it because I thought, well, yeah, I just, they didn't want to speak to me because I am I have so much murk. And this is another thing that my um, son was telling me, that he went to a workshop and he cleared away a lot of the anger and resentment that he had in his life about the different things. And in the second, like in this like great moment, he understood what he was meant to do. So that's all part of it too. So I like uh, when Max was talking about in the beginning and Jim about, you know, meditating, doing the own, clearing up any negative feelings and thoughts. If, like, if I know I'm supposed to channel something at a certain time, if I get angry with somebody right before or or half an hour before, I'm like, oh my God, I'm doomed. I can't do this. I got angry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are the things that get in my way um, so yeah taking the time sometimes I don't really take the time like in half an hour at least before just to listen to Om, just to do it just to clear up all, all the stuff um, I think Bree and Randolph told me to take a bath with um, with uh, sea salt and baking soda or sea salt and something else but yep. just to clear up the aura and things like that so yeah um, I just wanted to share about that. Sometimes I think if I'm bringing my vibration down through anger, through hurt, through whatever, uh, it's really hard for the higher vibration to channel through me. Although, like I said, they have done it anyway. And sometimes 
they're just so desperate to get a message out that anybody who's willing to sit there and be willing to give a message from them they will use anyway in some way because they just have to find people to do it. It's It reminds me of, and I don't mean to bring up a, a religious topic, but when uh, Jesus, uh, for his wedding, he had there were already a lot of very high level chosen people to come and they all refused so he went out and got anybody from the street to do it. Sometimes I feel like those more qualified maybe are not ready and willing and those who might be less qualified for certain reasons of whatever um, are just being called so yeah that's how I think of it sometimes okay thank great you example, great example yeah I was just gonna mention too that um, something I've been working on for the last year that's really helped me and it's helped to clarify my thoughts it's helped me to find my balance in life um, and to kind of figure out what I'm here for and it's uh, it's clearing out those shadows like she was talking about just now with the anger um, I didn't even realize I had underlying anger to be honest with you um, but it's the things that have built up through your life that you really just didn't deal with that you kind of stuffed down um, and I was really really good at that so, you know I had to go to work I had to put on the good face and I had to be a public person so I was really good at just stuffing it down and making that wall even bigger and better around my heart. So it's taken me a good year to do some, you know, actual damage to that wall. <laughs> but um, it's been really, really worth it. It's it's kind of been painful, but at the same time, it's uh, healing. So I would encourage anybody who might be having issues with, um, you know, underlying anger or not realizing why why they react a certain way to certain things to yes. you know maybe look into that thanks oh Valerie you're beautiful thank you so and Trinity I, I, I wanted to say um, that there is a reason why all of you are here today it's not an accident that you wanted to become a channeler and, at the, and you're at a channeling class that's not an accident uh, spirit has brought you here uh, something in your your life is letting you know that you are going to be bringing messages to humanity or to your friends or to whoever it is that you need to bring the, these messages for. How many of you have sat around and said, I've done all these things that you said to do, but yet I'm still not channeling? How many of you said, I know that I'm ready, I know that it's right there, but it's still not happening? How many can you, how many of you feel that way? I do, Jim. Hmm? I definitely do. Like you've done everything, you've done the meditations, you've done yeah. everything, and yeah. still there's it's it's not quite there yet. And you're not afraid. <laughs> And you're no, not no, hesitant. <laughs> don't worry. That does not mean that it's not going to happen. Let me tell you something. There has been times where there are people around me that say, "I know that I'm supposed to channel. It hasn't happened yet. Why hasn't it happened yet? I've done prayer. I've done meditation. I've opened my heart. I've opened everything up. Everything's good. I can't think of a single thing." that I've done wrong and you haven't it's just not your time yet some of you have a specific time to start channeling and they know when that is spirit knows when that is spirit understands who you are and that if you would start channeling a little beforehand perhaps you wouldn't do enough preparation to let it continue in the way it's supposed to go now don't worry about that what I do suggest to those of you who know that you're ready, who know that you are right this far away from channeling, but haven't not done it yet, is to start just talking. Whenever you, um, whenever you feel that there's a being around you, whenever you feel like there's a spirit close by, just start saying, hello, I know you're there. I, I would love for you to come through. 
I would love to understand what's happening with me. I'd like to make sure that my passages are all open. And sometimes during those periods, you get a, a clarification that they are, they are there and they are going to come through. That does not mean that you every time you do that, you're going to channel. But I know that many of you are ready. I know that many of you have done all these things and that the, you feel the entities around you, that you feel the energies. They touch you. They, they ca caress you even. And, and you're going, I, I know they're there. They just haven't come through. Be patient. They will. I promise you, there's a reason why each and every one of you are here today to either improve your skills or to bring them out in some way, to understand who you are, to relax. And I'm going to bring Takur in very shortly, but I want uh, Max to um, uh, do the rest of his presentation if, you, if uh, you're ready for that. Um. Thank you. There is so many There's topics. So many yes, topics. absolutely. I know. It can go give, forever. Yeah, I will give the microphone to Jit. He, he has a thing to share. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, Hello. Hi. I agree with you that it is no accident or coincidence that we're all here. And, and yeah, we're all ready to start channeling. And so I would argue that we all already are, and it's just to what degree and in which way. And so, and so for me, I've really had to deal with this frustration that I don't see energy, and I don't hear my guides, and I don't listen to angels and all of that. But I've had to wrap my mind around the fact that I primarily am claircognizant, so I have to listen to the ideas that come to me. So I may or may not be as blocked as I think I am. Same with me. Excellent. Say absolutely same with me. That's I have the answers point. without knowing who gives them. All right, and so this whole time I've thought I'm so blocked, I'm so blocked, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and at the same time I'm having these ideas, and when I don't act on them, later it makes sense. And so, and that is um, thank you. part right. of it. Yep. You just have nobody to tell the ideas to right now, so when that moment comes, those ideas will be coming to somebody that needs to hear them. You already are channeling, no yeah. question. And I yes, I, I think add, we all are, yes. Thank you. I agree. And I, I wanted to add, too, about um, many of us get information and we don't really know what it means or what to do with it. It's like you'll get information or you'll get signs or symbols or words or names or dreams. And you're not really sure what to do with the information. And sometimes I find if I just write it down or if I just do anything with it, it's almost as if I know I'm going to know when I'm going to need it. And in a conversation or in a situation, and it will come to me. And, I'll, and it's like, now. Now's the time you need to share that thing. And then the connection's made. There are so many ways that channeling can um, affect your life and other people's life. It's just amazing. Uh, it's an amazing ability, and it's an amazing communication because it's not just your average communication. It's a special communication that gives you something that, that you need to know or you give something to someone that they need to know or will strengthen them in some way. Sometimes you don't even know what that way is, but you right. know that and it's so, there somewhere. And it's sometimes, it's just like he said, it's sometimes it's so subtle that you realize later, oh, that was the thing. And now I know it doesn't necessarily come as that thing the way you think it's going to. Sometimes it, it's not that lightning bolt. Sometimes it's just that little subtle message and it because we don't think it profound enough, yet it is the answer. So it allows us to step back a little bit and understand the messages are sometimes they're quieter than we expect them to be. And I don't know if that's the right word, but 
they're not as powerful or strong as we think and so we sort of dismiss them and then we realize later oh okay they do come subtly or they do come in just you know some way that you wouldn't expect right and they don't have to make sense to us and right. I've heard it explained and then that brought into focus something that happened between me and my ex-wife because she's she's gifted as well where we do have to just let it through and it is not necessarily there to make sense to us if, especially if it's for somebody else because there are times when misinformation has come across to allow for somebody to rise to the occasion for them to make a decision for them to say well this channel is telling me something but it doesn't quite make sense and for them to rise to the occasion for them to come through and find their own voice may be what's needed there and their guides will recognize that and let that through us. I like how you said that about the misinformation coming through on purpose because that happens even to us. Our yes. spirit guides send us stuff yes. and yet it's almost like, and I don't want to call it a lie, but you know what, exact, I know exactly what you mean. It's almost like they're saying we have to feed you this information even if it's not correct because it's going to lead you into a direction in which you're going to recognize that. Right, and it does depend on our specific guides or who is um, channeling for us at that time because our guides very many times have strong personalities and mine um, in general have senses of humor and some of my friends say, oh, well, such and such guide is a trickster. I have to question what they let through. I have to. They test me constantly. Mm -hmm. So it, it does depend on our guides specifically. Me too. Sometimes I actually laugh at them because they have such a sense of humor and I'm thinking, yeah, you guys think you're really clever. I do. I like talk to them like it's a conversation <laughs> because they're like, I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, it, it is. It's like sometimes they say stuff, it's like, and then they laugh and they're, <laughs> it's just, it is. It's like, in a, and you think, am I making this up? You know, it's like, I couldn't even make this up if I tried. <laughs> yeah, the last Mark. thing that came through, what's that? Yeah. Humor can sometimes buffer an otherwise rough message at yeah. times. Yeah, the Good last point. The last, Good point. <laughs> the last, I still laugh about it now, and I laugh about it with my friend. Um, I was I was with a friend, and they were really, really going through it. And what came through for me was, "Do you want a Mountain Dew?" <laughs> <laughs> And and this this person this person was bunched up on the floor and I, I, I was um, I was needing to take care of myself I you know physically I struggle I was in pain and I didn't have the energy and I, I knew I needed to bring a change quickly I knew I needed to make a shift and I couldn't figure out what it was and then do you want a Mountain Dew came booming through and I thought really are we going to do this and I asked them do you want a Mountain Dew and they stopped what do you want a Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> and then everything worked out fine, and I just, I just couldn't believe that that's what it was. That's what it changed. <laughs> the, it changed what there. was coming through. It changed the the energy. So that's yes. what they wanted to do. And they yeah, and, and, and clearly it wasn't that really. whole experience. Right, and the day was saved, and you know things were able to unravel from there. Excellent. And thank goodness you said it. Because otherwise you you would have just thought it and not said it. Many people go through that and say, I'm not going to say that. Right. But it's what is needed to be said at that moment. Right. So that's beautiful. Thank you for that. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. So um, because that is channeling at its most beautiful when it can change the energy even when the message doesn't seem like a message at all even though it didn't seem like a message it changed the energy and was very powerful keep that in mind yes yeah sometimes and you know oh sorry max go ahead uh, if we go first and then next I was just going to say that sometimes we do lose sight of the fact that we are creating our own reality all the time and that really 
everything is always a message from our higher selves. We're always, you know, being channeled information from everything because everything in our creation is the energetic manifestation of our thoughts and our beliefs. So everything is actually giving us messages all the time. It's just, do, do you, I have found in my awakening, if you will, that that's what Ascension kind of is, is becoming aware of that, that you really yes. are attached to all of it and everything is talking to you like all the time. Yes. And be, that's a very, very good point, Wendy is those of you who haven't channeled yet, are you sure you haven't channeled yet? Because exactly. that energy is all around you. <laughs> Those That information is going through you. You may be channeling and not know that it's there yet. They're relaxing you. They're bringing in your information, bringing in information. Some information that you may be thinking is not really your own and you feel for it sort of natural with it but if you really think about it where is this information coming from have you ever thought about that and yeah, have you, are, are you sure that you're not channeled <laughs> I can add something to that Jim because um, I have been told that I am a conscious channel and that I've been conscious channeling for a long time and a lot of times when I give people advice I am channeling and I'm still trying to figure that all out so I'm looking forward to figuring out the specifics and being able to actually tell when I'm doing it and then continue with it if yes. I want to. Um, I, w I have a little story that reminds me before I became a channeler I was in rock bands and I wrote a lot of music and I did a lot of things like, like that and um, and I was a spiritual person but I wasn't like uh, I didn't uh, exude any spirituality that I could think of or was I was very third dimensional and I love third dimension a lot but as I was living my third dimension I guess it was very obvious that someday I was going to be something else because when I started telling people after I channeled that I was a channeler of aliens, they're always they're most of them are like, Oh, yeah, we figured something like that would happen with you. Yeah. You've been channeling music your whole life, you've been channeling this. When I told my very Catholic friend that I channeled aliens, he went Oh, I knew that there was something different about you, so that doesn't surprise me. Nobody was surprised. It was weird. I thought everybody was going to be a oh, shock, but it wasn't shocking to anyone, except for my family. My family did not get it, but everybody that other outside my family that knew me knew that that, that I had been I had some kind of psychic ability or something. They weren't sure what it was, but they knew I had something. But I didn't know it. I had no idea. So it just came out all of a sudden. All of a sudden. So, but I was. I'm very thankful. <laughs> I'm very thankful. Well, I don't tell my family I channel aliens. I just kind of keep it to like messages from you know the spirits or angels, or I kind of keep it in a context that there's more comfortable for them, although I still feel a bit in, unauthentic. So, excellent. Um, Jim, I would like to get back to a question, if that's okay. Because sure. I, made, I made a comment before, and I didn't really have a question to it. And my question is this, when right before you're going to channel, right, if you have a channeling session, and you get angry or you get upset or hurt about something or something, how do you dissipate it before your channel? Or does the channeling dissipate it? I always prepare for my channels no matter how I feel. I could be not feeling good, I could be a little miffed, or I could be uh, distracted, or the phone may have rang 14 times, or a lot of things could happen. 
before a channel session. Or you can have a room full of people like on Saturday and they're all talking and they're still talking when you're trying to to be to begin to channel. <laughs> so you, they're in the background going blah, 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 and you're trying to meditate. But you know what? I go, dear God, just uh, come in, do what you need to do, bring me into that balance, into that grounding that I need to be so that I can bring in the best message possible. I do never stop my meditation no matter what. Even if I'm angry, even if I don't feel good, even no matter what, I always prepare for the channel session and say and thank God and just let ask him to bring about the best possible message and the best possible clarity that he can. So even if you're not feeling good, even if you you are mad, you can still do a good channel session if you connect to the spirit. If you connect through thankfulness and and meditation beforehand and prepare yourself. Uh, with it, you can just still give it over and say, "I'm not, I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm not going to let that be part of the message." Because if you don't, you can let anger be part of a message. It's very possible. It's happened. I've seen that happen with other channelers. I've seen it happen with myself, where anger has come through or negativity because they weren't prepared for the session. They um, there was other things uh, also that contributed to that. They were altered in their state of mind, something of this nature. If you do drugs while you're channeling, you cannot control who comes in or what is being said because I it just is not going to happen because they 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 get altered when they come in just as much as you're altered. So. When they come into your mind, they are altered. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Great answer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and keep in mind that it's all an illusion. The physical reality is an illusion. You are creating this illusion. It's a program. The true, much more true reality is the spirit reality. And um, just realizing that this is a game, it's an illusion. It's um, it's you but creating it using some software, some divine software. So you, if there is a chat in the room, that chat is created by you. Right. You see, Be all, aware all, that if you are altered in any way and you bring uh, an alien in or anything, your belief system also has part something to do with that. So if you believe they're altered, they will be. So... They will be altered if you believe they will be altered, and you will alter them. <laughs> so I've seen that happen many times. So I have been asked um, a question, uh, an important question. You know, what to do with depression and what to do with the sensation of being hurt and under attack? Like someone is talented but feels like there is an attack going on and he is depressed and he is, um, he is in mental pain or insomnia and so on. Um, again, you're creating it. There is um, an interaction between you and uh, some other spiritual projections like the planets, the astrology. So every morning, or even more often, I kind of measure the situation around me. What? So you kind of wake up into the new simulated reality. It's not fully real, but but every day is a little different in, in the vibration. And I see what is happening. Sometimes I find that me and others are becoming clumsy and drop things, break things, so I put the check mark. Sometimes I see the messages coming this morning that there is some distortion in the politics, in people's minds, and sometimes there is lots of aggression happening around. 
So I, I calibrate my, my relation to this day accordingly. In any way, um, it's on a, all an illusion, and um, you don't have to react to it in a way you're supposed to by 3D standards. So in a higher state of mind, you just bless it all and be thankful for, for it anyway. So when darkness comes onto you, take it easy. Just take it easy, learn not to perceive it in the same way you did before. Um, fairness, I mean, it's all about fairness and perception of danger. Understand that from higher perspective, the danger and fairness are very different than from human perspective. Of course, you have to stay alive. Of course, you have to take care of your uh, family and friends, but but you do it mostly due to connection to the spirit and through the prayer. You do your job, but but you don't have to worry. As as a healer, like as a surgeon, a doctor, you, you see suffering around, but you still do the work and don't allow it to damage your state of being. Same thing with channeling. You know, even if people around you are in distress, you you feel their pain, but you block yourself from taking on their pain. You feel the chaos, uh, discordance there, but you block yourself from taking on yourself the chaos and discordance. You stay purified and you smile anyway. So, what is the highest, higher um, fairness? They are not worried as much about death. Not as much. Uh, of course, a good body has to be used properly, so they don't like suicides. But you know, if the body is discarded, there will be another incarnation. The lesson will be learned. Um, so the value of death is important for animals and humans, but from higher perspective, the death is not as scary. It's just the end of one cycle, and there will be another cycle coming. Uh, the value of fairness in terms of you know things, justice, divine justice is very different. It's very different. So, uh, I would say drop altogether the idea of bringing justice and punishing anyone. Uh, just you know, it gives you so much more peace in mind. You don't have to bring justice right here, right there. You know, if somebody offended you, just it's another expression of love. Thank you, thank them anyway. Take it easy. Like sometimes you take it as love, and sometimes you become transparent, allow it to come through. Don't take it on yourself. You're loved anyway. You your job is to shine and to smile and to heal everyone and not to be fighting anymore. Yeah, fighting and bringing justice is not part of your business anymore. Mm. Being depressed means that your energies are coming down in terms of Reiki energies and etheric energies. So there is time for expansion and there is time for contraction. Expansion, contraction. It's very normal physical process. Enjoy your depression as you would enjoy your upliftment. Manic depressive people, you know, have that periodic and they love their mania and sometimes they keep their mania depression cycle just because the depression is the payment for the mania. Uh, contraction is the payment for being able to expand. So when you contract, just take it easy, contract. Contract. Put yourself in the corner, do whatever is needed to get you through the night and then be ready to expand whenever the cycle ends. But when the cycle ends, when you're ready to expand, do it with force, with energy, and with integrity. So understand that depression is only part of the cycle. Sometimes it goes for years. I had like a couple years of depression recently. But most of that was just misjudgment of the timing. Basically, all the aliens were saying to me, aliens and angels, your time will come, you will come back. Now it's just a period of going down. But for me, like from 3D perspective, I had no job. 
Uh, my family situation was, my wife, you know, was troubled by me not having a job, right? Uh, my friends looked at me as a loser and so on. So, so from their perspective, they were absolutely right. It just their perspective wasn't my perspective anymore. So I was oscillating between I'm an enlightened being or I'm a loser. I'm an enlightened being or I'm a loser. And until I just they just came together. Okay, I'm an enlightened being and a loser, and it's fine. I just smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, here's another way to handle that. Oh, um, when I get to feeling sort of low. I ask God to change it into something else. And a lot of times he will, out of depression, I get inspired. It's like I take that, that loneliness or whatever it is that's causing it and write out the poetry, write out the thoughts about what I'm feeling, and it can help others know that they are not alone or and help them know how I feel but I take that to the low times and turn it into inspiration I make it I start writing about it and That's start what making I always it into did. something else me too Jim I've always done that too I just poured it out into writing so that and it was the way of for me it was a way of opening up my throat chakra in a way that now I understand because back then I didn't feel like I had a voice and so this allowed me to have a voice and I could speak it in poetry and lyrics and prose and kind of hide the message I was really trying to get out behind it so that I could still you know um, not be completely transparent to everybody yet still express myself in a way that I couldn't in my 3d reality or at least I perceive that I couldn't because of course I'm you know we're creating it but understood yes because what it is you can take those lower energies and make them into something else they don't have to just be down they can be expressive you can express your lower energies in very creative ways. You can take your lower energies and uh, put it to music, put it to poetry, put it to uh, uh, bring it to nature and have nature deal with some of your energy. So there are many ways to move out of your uh, lower energies into creative energies. Does that make sense? Do have words, any of you done that before? Very much so, and I, I have to say that Al um, may share that too, that feeling that I had that kid just for um, survival, you know, it, because when you grow up in a dysfunctional family, you have to try to find ways to not be depressed all the time, you know, because you're just a little kid and you don't, and you don't have the mechanisms and the tools you know, um, to deal with that kind of depression. And so I found that that was a saving grace for me, was to yes. be able to express myself in that way so I wasn't uh, so depressed, you know, um, because it got me through a, a family of, you know, a, a alcoholism, you know, so. Understood. Well, when I was a child and I was living in a very dysfunctional system, I went into a fantasy world and uh, that helped me survive. <laughs> Problem was I remained in that fantasy world. <laughs> it, it, it was always an escape when I had any kind of emotional stuff. I would just lay down and just go somewhere else, which can be useful and can also be less useful. But yeah, anyway, thank you, Jim, for sharing that and Wendy. And Max, what you shared, I know he's not here now, but anyway, that was beautiful. I, <clears throat> but I wanted to reiterate something. The, the people that are here today, you all will be channeling. I want you to understand that there is a reason why you're here, and the, and the reason for your channeling is important. Um, there's a message that's coming through each and every one of you to someone or a group of people. Some of you will become uh, very well known, I'm sure, and others of you will use your channeling in a more private way, but still it's important.
that channelers are coming forth at this time. There is a lot of messages out there that need to be spoken. First contact is coming. Um, a new phase of evolution is coming. Fourth dimensional energy is increasing. The world needs to be prepared for a lot of these things that they just are not prepared for yet. And um, you will be helpful in guiding or in, and directing and being part of that beginning for them to know what to do in the next phases of reality. Now, I know that you're saying, well, I'm not channeling yet, but you will be. And there is a reason for it. And your love will increase when you start to channel. I have it, has it, those of you that have cha are channeling, have you noticed that when you channel, your love is is very full, that your your emotions are very full at those times? You know, Jim, I have been All the time. I have been yes, I have been yeah. jealous of you doing channeling all the time because it definitely does it's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful after the afterglow of channeling and it's really amazing and the love and the heart it all increases yes and the gratitude and the happiness of having given somebody something that they inspires them or moves them or helps them it's it's awesome so yeah I I have definitely experienced that yes anybody else thank you that was beautiful thank you DC, did you have something? Or TC, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no, she just said exactly what I, what I had in mind. Like, it's, it's, it's how we feel. It's sort of an afterglow, like you. Yes, energy. because <laughs> you are using your, that talent unselfishly. You are using it to bring positivity to the world, to others. And so, yes, there's a, a feeling of gratitude to God to having let yourself be used to do something that very positive and you will find that after you've it's channeled like, the first time that you will be able to do it more easily because you will open up you'll be less afraid you'll know that that it is part of something greater than yourself it really is an emotional experience for it's me. Like, like a that gift too. you were not expecting. It's yes. so beautiful. It's the love is so I don't even know how to describe how I feel. It's as if my whole insight opens up in love and all my chakras open and just I don't know how to explain it. Um, and even that that last um, you know, during the Reiki session, it was very emotional for me with Takur there. I can't even describe how it was for me. I, I just even thinking about it, it's amazing. Um, and even sitting here now, my internet's not very good. Um, but <clears throat> even sitting here now, it's I draw I draw these languages. Beautiful. Excellent. And and so a lot of people don't understand that too is channeling. And I wanted to say something else. Those of you who are not channeling yet, don't put an expectation on what it's going to be like because it's not going to be like that. A lot of people put an expectation. Was it anything like you thought it was going to be? Those of you who are channel, uh, is it anything like you thought it was going to be? No. See? It, you can't really know what it is. Until well, for me, it's more natural than I would have expected. And yes. So sometimes I wonder, am I really channeling? Because it, it's very <laughs> natural and even conversational. But like you said before, Jim, sometimes you, you say things that you wouldn't normally say in the way that you say it and with the feeling that it comes out with it. So I kind of know it's channeling, but it's so natural. Um, yeah, so it's a good point you're making about not expecting some big lightning strike or some, you know, huge deep yes. booming voice or anything yes. like that. Yeah. It is, it will be more natural than you think. So don't expect 
like you to be able to say, oh, right now I'm going to do with this right at this second because when you're first starting, it's going to start off naturally. It may start off that you're just talking to yourself. Some people start talking to themselves and then they realize, oh, somebody's talking to me. So it comes in many different forms. So don't, I don't expect it to come one way or another. It's going to come the way it comes and it may surprise you. So, but I know that you're all ready and prepared for it. And you all, all have the vibration high enough for it. I see that already. I feel that already. It's a beautiful thing. It's a natural and wonderful thing. And to, Kerr wants to come in and talk, uh, but she wants to make sure Max doesn't have anything more to say. I think he is still getting set up, so we'll let him finish here. I did want to add something quickly while we're on this topic, um, and I wanted to thank you, Jim, especially for kind of reiterating that we are all here for an important reason, and we have very important messages to share with Absolutely. humanity at large for um, the betterment of this whole world. I feel it very strongly for myself, like this is going to be really big for me and um, so I know it's no coincidence I'm here too but I also wanted to add in here because um, Wendy I know you showed your um, galactic script that you have channeled and we're talking about them coming through and whether trans channeling or conscious channeling whatever but then also um, <clears throat> there's the aspect of um, channeling like what Jonah was asking about, which I wanted to make sure to ask her question, channeling sign language and channeling signs. Oh, yes. And oh, so yes, she I do that had, too, yeah. Yeah, so she had asked, um, you know, I channel this sign language, I think, but I don't understand what it means. Why is that? And so I, I wanted to have us quickly touch on that, and especially Wendy, because I know you do that. You had mentioned that you started and didn't know what it meant, and now slowly you're starting to get translations coming in, and now you just do it automatically, even when you're talking in English. <laughs> you're channeling. <laughs> I <sorry>. know. <laughs> um, it's cool. Like Jim has actually channeled before. Takur has said to us, too, that it is a form of communication with the children, the hybrid children. Um, and not necessarily primarily, but yeah, if if I'm if Jim or anyone else wants to re, you know actually elaborate on that because I've always asked myself the same question. I've asked, and actually I've even spoke to Brad Johnson about it. And um, it it's just a, it is it's another form of communication. I don't um, and I think sometimes they tell me it's a part of an activation. I actually other channelers. Yes. Um, and the uh, the hand signs as well. So, and they are actually use, utilizing them as a tool for activation for people. <laughs> so I do get a, I do get a lot of mixed information about it. Um, and I myself am not always clear why I'm doing the signs when I'm doing them, but they seem to come extremely natural to me, as if I'm, it's if I'm just it's just another language, and and it you're right. It's like I do it even when I'm like it even now when I'm talking, I'm doing it. Yes. And, that, and I wanted to add in there um, quickly that, you know, we were talking about like how sometimes channel messages will come through simply to just change the energy, like with the Mountain Dew story. And um, <clears throat> I feel like, because I know, Wendy, you had mentioned this before too, I mean, yes, light language, galactic language, is of a certain frequency that is typically higher than what we speak in these earthly languages here and there is a component where it will change the energy light languages can activate people to speak their own or they can you know clear shockers there's a lot they can heal people there's a lot of different things light language can do and I think that this sign language this channeled sign language is also an aspect of that as well. Like and it, it does. Energy and it, it, it has its own energy. It feels healing to me when I do it, and yeah. it, he it feels healing to me when I see it. And when I watched Joanna, she reached out to me because she saw my videos and said, I do this, can you help me? I don't understand it. And so when, when, she, when I first saw her doing the signs, which was just maybe a week or two ago that we, I actually got to see her in the webinar, 
I felt an emotional response to her signs that I could not explain. I even thinking about it now, there's a grace to it and a language all of its own that I felt this emotional wave of gentle love come over me that I could not describe. And I saw Joanna doing that today already uh, at times. And I wanted to mention this. This came to me that it is the, the sign language is for the uh, ch hybrid children because if, before they can use their vocal cords, they can understand the sign language and they can actually um, they actually speak that way before they speak because some alien vocal cords do not develop right away. Uh, but it is also something else, and there's like four or five of you here that are very attached to elementals. And it has something to do with the elementals bringing across messages about the earth as well. And that's why you're feeling the healing portion of it. It is healing toward the earth. You're sending out signals of healing toward to the elementals you're giving them healing energies they are all around you there's four or five of you that there's elementals all around you I feel that with uh, Wendy and with uh, Bree and with uh, Valerie and Joanna I feel that with you as well that there's elementals all around you and um, it's it's very strong with you and um, there may be others. Uh, I know there's ele elementals around also Christopher, uh, and I'm not sure who else, but it's very strong that this that the elementals want to bring a message to the world as well. And this is part of why some of you are here. Because the, the elemental message, the message from the elementals is going to be very uh, powerful to the earth. I need to pronounce a few more topics before you go channel. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just um, one of the topics, uh, just for the beginners, uh, when Jim started, I was around him and supporting him. Basically, when he leaves his body, I was there to take care of him. Like when uh, one of the greatest channelers, Ed, uh, Edgar Casey. Uh, first demonstrated his uh, his channeling through sleep. Uh, one of the surgeons jumped to him and uh, cut his hand just to make sure that he's alive and uh, is there a, a reaction. And Casey was very offended and never came to this group again. So I wanted to make sure when Jim starts channeling, nobody hurts his body and. Uh, and also nobody hurts his uh, etheric body, basically. Uh, I was keeping the audience and the energy in the room um, in good shape and friendly. So I was ready to guard him. And so having that, that um, guardian, helper, friend, physical friend nearby is a great help. So when you go into trans channel, if you do, um, f find a friend who would be with you. So second device is from Bashar, you know, it really helps to have the audience, interested audience, uh, to, for, for having a channel. So look for your own audience. Easiest way to find it is on uh, Human Colony. So when I started doing my channeling practices, I was coming to the chat and saying, who is available to date for me to practice? So you do it in a very protected environment, one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, there should be a person who really needs a message because if there is no need for the message, then the message is not as strong. So find someone who, who does need a message. Um, a second option for finding uh, a practice place is local meetups and uh, local spiritualist church. In the spiritualist church, there is part of the service is a sermon where, which is served by the organizer and then there is part of it is a healing session when you can offer your Reiki healing to others in a sitting position, very easy, like five minute sessions and the third thing is messages and then 
traditionally they invite anyone who wants to give messages to give messages. So that's where I practice my messages, like psychic messages. You don't go to trance state, but Jim did actually, and some of the organizers do. They go into trance state and channel, but normally you do your psychic conscious channeling work. So for me, uh, remembering the messages was hard. So during the ser during the other parts of the during the sermon and during other parts of the music and stuff meditation, I was writing down my messages, and then when the time was to give them, I was giving them to people, and the messages were typically poems and typically abstract poems. It wasn't something very specific. It was something very abstract, and it was a great experience of confirmations. I give them something I don't understand. It's just abstract thing like um, centurions. I I, uh, I I gave them something about centurions which didn't mean, mean anything to me, right? And it has two, two meanings. One is uh, Roman centurions of the time of the Christ and another of the Jesus and another one is Alpha Centurion. It's the same word. And obviously the person who received the message, he was an Alpha Centurion, and Centurions of the Jesus time also made a lot of sense to me, to him. So, so he gets a message and explains to me what it meant. So, and that is a very easy weekly practice. You go there and practice. So having audience is essential. And the last message, which is essential also, uh, okay, do it gradually. You don't have to go into trans channel yet tomorrow and go to big audience like Jim. You can start slowly and grow, grow into that. When you go into that state, when there is a flow, it is as strong as you can take, and sometimes it's stronger than you can take. So, it was burning me at first, right? And it can burn you too. So, take it easy. Take it one breath at a time and be ready to purify yourself and adapt to that flow of energy. It burns you because you have the resistance, like that's the Ohm law in electricity. The higher the resistance, the bigger is the heating of the, of the, um, of the con channel, the conductor. You're conducting, conducting the spirit energy. If you're a clear, open channel, it goes through you and you feel high. If you are a clogged, mixed up channel, it goes through and you feel pain. Um, so if you do, just do the Reiki um, afterwards. Clarify yourself in your meditation, clarify yourself, cl clear yourself, clean yourself up, become a clearer channel. And next time when you do it, it will be more pure, uh, more open. So, you know, it's like a pump. You have to Piping, right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Piping. There is a word for that. Uh, connected pipes. It's it's a channeling system. You channel something which is very fluid. So that fluid, spiritual fluid, comes through your spine, through your chakras, uh, through your aura. You have to develop the muscle and develop the channels, true pipes to to channel that energy. So so develop that. Uh, and then the next thing is. When channelings are erroneous, that happens. Like Jim was channeling someone, it was Tucker speaking, and the name which was given, there was no face, there was a Saturday webinar, there was no face, the name which was given sounded masculine, but it was a female on the other side. But because the name sounded masculine, Tucker spoke of her as he, male, and the message was valid, but the the recipient was completely upset. If if the recipient feels like she is a female and the cure is speaking to her as a male, it means the whole thing is erroneous. So the person left and never came back to us. That happens, and it happens very frequently. And it happens to me, like I ask my alien friends, what's the percent of my... Um, Pleiadian DNA, and they give me percentage which is up to the decimal point or two decimal points, and they give like 19.55, and sometimes they give 48.9, and sometimes they give 8.9. It 
And on different times and different sessions with different channels, it would be a different percentage. And uh, it could be perceived as complete trickery and erroneously er error. And on, I'm sure on their side, that's what they measure. But they come from a very different reality. They are not from this world. So judging channeling messages, channeled messages by the rules of this illusion, of this 3D world is, is not very helpful. They have their own logic and they come to us from, from a very different reality. And the aliens look at us at different timelines. From so they like this dude works at ni with nine different timelines. So sometimes they just don't even remember which timeline they're dealing with, right? And so when they come to us, that's what they see. They tell us what they see. And also on the way, the message is translated through Jim's Jim's mind. So whatever comes through comes. Um, in a way that it is, it could be perceived as an error or a trick or a, um, misguidance, but it is just the way it is. I had, you know, I'm consciously researching this and pay attention to this. And sometimes the miracles, often miracle, like almost daily, miracles happen. And miracles happen when, um, like, I had two sessions in a row. With it just happened, two sessions, one with Jim and one with. Brooke, and I asked the beings, I'm stuck in my reading, what should I read next? Whatever book I grab is not, doesn't resonate with me. I, can, I can't find anything good. And both of them gave me the same book. I'm sure they didn't speak to each other. It was just, you know, like a pure qualified miracle. It's one of the most purest, like very random book which I never heard before. Uh, Jim even didn't even read it, but the, the, the being just gave me the name of the book, and it was the same book from different channelers. This is like um, super perfect confirmation. And nowadays, these confirmation come, confirmations come almost every day. So what I'm saying is, take it easy. You don't have to judge channel messages by the rules of 3D world. They, they just don't feed that. High reality is very different. What is important? What is important for higher beings? Uh, what is their priorities? First is your spiritual growth. Like, you know, no matter what happens around, what your spiritual, is growth, spiritual growth, growth is number one. How do you pro progress in terms of rebuilding your spiritual body and reconnecting to your higher self? That is number one. Second is so first thing is your personal spiritual growth. Second is the health of the whole illusion, the health of the whole reality. Like that, that illusion is supported by a lot of spirits, a lot of beings, and the whole humanity, all these billions of souls are playing this game of reincarnation. It's a huge program. It's not only digital, it also has a wave property, so it's, it's very complex. And it has its own logic and it has its own consciousness. So it, run by, it runs by itself. And a lot of high-level angelics and elementals, human ascended spirits are keeping that running. So the health of the program is more important than smaller things for them, than justice, than presence of evil. So they would allow a war as long as it doesn't damage the whole program as long as it doesn't damage the whole humanity. So if it's not, if it's a local war, they would allow it because it's a choice of human collective to experience these wars. So understanding that higher priorities is important. They still have the plan in, in, in works. And the small details don't matter for them, but they need us to ascend. So ascension is the third priority. So these are the main messages I had to, had to deliver for today. Um, Jim, you can take over if you like. Well, I think we should take a break, and then Sir Kerr should come in. Absolutely. We'll take it at uh, 2 o'clock, come, uh, come back, and Sir Kerr will be back. I will bring Sir Kerr in. 
when we get back and she will finish the sessions. I will finish. I'll just let her finish. Yeah, we also need initiations, so let her do initiations. Max? There's a lot of echo. What did you say? Um, initiations. I asked her to do initiations for the people. Oh, yes. Right. Thank you. Uh, eight minute break. Now it's 10.50, so my time. So 58 minutes would be uh, when it reconvened. Max? Trinity. I would like to thank you for that last segment. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Very excellent. 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 Yeah, I have to condense a lot of big topics in, in five minutes. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. See you guys later. See you later. In seven minutes. Can you help me um, just to see? Yes. I just want to
I'm gonna turn this off still. Yay. All right. Hey, Anya. Nice hey, Cassie, are we good to, Cassie, are we good to hear your voice today? Hi, <laughs> Hi, soul sister. How are you doing? Hello, soul sister. <laughs> good. <laughs> Want to give you a hug. <laughs> Hugs, give much you love, hug, Hugs baby. right back at you. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you. You have a nice voice. Thank you. No, I nice thank you. Voice. Okay, now I'm happy. Now we can. Now we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stan. I see the top of your head, but that's sufficient. <laughs> Hey, Joanna. Hey, TC. TC, can I see your face? I, 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 unless you want to hide it. It's okay if you want to hide it. Yeah. I wanted to ask Anya, were you also doing sign language at one time? Anya, you're muted if you speak. Anya, were you doing sign language at one time during... Sometimes when I feel I'm getting messages, it feels like my hands are doing something. I thought I saw your hands move also. Oh, oh. So I'm, I know Sometimes that... Sometimes it just goes, I don't understand how and why, but most of the time they're connected and I'm getting different signs. And... Um, Excellent. Uh, Getting a lot of uh, messages with writings. I don't know if you can see it, but we can see it. Yes, pages Excellent. and pages and me too. Pages and pages and pages of it. And yes. just palms. Yep. And most of the time, yeah. it's like actually the energy is coming from the hands because I feel really like hot, warm coming out of it, and different position of fingers. And it's moving energy or away or towards the people or towards me, but it's most of it like out, like it's coming and yeah. it's coming out. It's interesting, but sometimes it's getting so hot. I have to actually like shake my hands off. Yes, I thought I saw you moving your hands too. So something <laughs> just happens out of nowhere when I'm like spacing out. I don't even pay attention to it. Excellent. So they Joanna, were saying yes. Yes. Uh, all right, uh, John. I think you're doing Arcturian, uh, Arcturian um, uh, signage. Well, go ahead and talk for a minute. I'm going to do a meditation and bring Takur in. All right, I will talk I to him. No, okay, I have no idea what she's going to say. I already said that, and now I will say one more thing: is that uh, finding a healer and a guru is essential. Um, we had um, Barbara, I had Barbara, our Reiki teacher, who was nearby when I needed it. So I could take on myself much more load of energy because I knew if something goes wrong, I can go to Barbara, she will set it straight. And then Jim was around and there was Peter, another friend of ours who passed away, who is a wonderful healer. So I had healers around me and a uh, Reiki share. So I had all this bad backup so I could take much more risks in spiritual work. I knew when I come back I have healers to set things straight and Jim is wonderful in, with that and Takur and other healers on the other side were helping a lot and Angelics. So work around to get your circle of Reiki healers who can help you. 
you can find them locally. You can go to share places, Reiki share places, and uh, and get that. Uh, channeling and healing go together, so get into Reiki and yoga and do that part. And pick up, pick your teacher and learn from your teachers, your gurus. I I chose Bashar. For me, Bashar is the teacher. Yes. Bashar is the teacher, and I'm te I'm learning from many others, so I connect to them very closely and research them, listen to them. The lectures by Krishna Das, the workshop by Krishna Das, were a huge step for me, a huge step, and uh, other Indian connected teachers. Hindu Indian connected teachers who are really helpful. Occur. Hey, Takur. Hello. It is nice to be here. Welcome. There are so we have, many of you there. Yes. We have a channeling class. We invite you guidance on channeling and initiation. I can give you channeling from my perspective. Being in the fourth dimension, channeling is a little different. However, you use your fourth dimensional energy when doing channeling. I would like to let you know that each and every one of you do have open channels in you. I can see that now. There is someone who's causing an echo. Ah, very well. Yes, each and every one of you are open to channeling. This is a lovely thing. From my perspective, Whenever someone is open, I can see that in their brain. I can know that they have a place that they are relaxed enough to have open for a channeling session. Now, some of you doubt your yourselves and doubt that you can do this. And sometimes whenever we get close to you or whenever an alien or spirit gets close to you, you tense up or close up a little bit. Do not do that. We are not going to hurt you. We are. There is nothing to be afraid of. Remember to ask for protection beforehand so that you may feel more secure. It is good if you feel secure whenever you are channeling because, of course, you want only positive entities to come to you. You want only those with good messages to bring them forth. But I notice that many times when we get close to some people and they feel us around, they start to tense up or feel fear or perhaps anxiety that they're not, sh they're afraid of the unknown, basically. What is known? Look at, your, look at the reality around you about channeling. Yes, there are some that bring through negative energy, but with your intent, that will not happen. Protect yourself, intend for positivity, and you will have nothing to fear. You will have nothing, no need for anxiety or doubt. There's no need to doubt yourself. Just let, because a lot of humans also think, oh, it's up to me to give the message. No, it's not up to you to give the message. It's up to us to give the message. If you think that it's up to you to give the message, then that is why you're not channeling. 
it is because you are taking responsibility for something that you need not take responsibility for. Do you agree with that, Max? Absolutely. Thank you. And therefore, those of you that already channel know how to relax at least enough for us to get through. Now, there can be some doubt, fear, and anxiety, and we can still get through. If, an if a message is important enough, if the time is right where we need to come through, we can come through even in times of fear, anxiety, nervousness, and then once we get through, within the minute you're calm. Within the minute everything is better because you're starting to relax. We're relaxing you. We're coming through in a way that is positive and beautiful and you feel that the energy is good and so therefore you start to relax. It takes some people longer, perhaps five or ten minutes, but most people it only takes a minute or two. But what I wanted to tell you is that the reason we choose certain people for to channel through is because they're familiar with who we are, first of all. Some of you are familiar. Some of you are not familiar, but yet you are not afraid. So if you are not afraid, then we can come to you. If you are familiar and trust us, then we can come to you. But like I said, if it's a necessity, we can come even in nervous and anxiety and fearful times. But it would have to be a necessity, pretty much. We would not just invade your space if you were feeling frightened or whatever. And um, even though within a couple minutes you would be calm, it still is not what we would prefer to do. We would prefer you to invite us in to relax yourself. Now, some of you have invited us in, but we have not come. Why? Because it might not be time. There might not be a message at the moment. There might not be a need for the channeling session. But we will come to speak to you personally if there is a need to do so. Now, people like Rujan, who is Safira, speaks to sometime can come through just with a, a very small message and just to, to let you know that he is there because he likes to be around certain people at certain times um, but just be aware that your channels are open now relax now Stan sometimes you do not want to channel because you're afraid to frighten the children or get have a moment where they you're not in touch with reality and you, I know you need to watch over family matters and things of that nature is that correct I cannot hear you but I think you're shaking yes. your head yes but some of you have other responsibilities and feel that you cannot channel at certain moments because there are other responsibilities holding you back from doing so. That is fine. We still know what is happening. We still understand that you are open for this uh, particular channeling session. It is just that you may be having other responsibilities at that moment. And if that is a huge concern, then we will not come through. Because we can read some of your thought processes. As we get into the mind, there are the vo there is the vocabulary, there is the personality sections, there is the intellectual portions that we can see and access. Our technology does do that and is able to see who you really are. Now, I am a channel, but I do not channel the same way that you do necessarily. <clears throat> My channels are more spiritual and more galactic in the sense that I have a I can contact anyone in the galaxy with technology 
But if I'm going to channel with them, that's something more personal, of course. But I can also channel spirits and things of that nature. But it is not something that I do a lot. If I am asked to do so, I will do so. For your sake and for those to help others. But I do not do it for personal help. But if, I, if there is a need for it, then I will do it. Are there questions for me at this time? I have a personal question, if I might ask you. Absolutely. Thank you. What is the one thing, when you have channels with me, that keeps me from going into trans-channeling, because that is what I want to do? I understand. First of all, get your chakras. You see, sometimes when the chakras are not bright enough, we cannot come in to push you into a trans-channel state. We can ca cause semi-conscious channeling or conscious channeling. But if, this, if the, we cannot get all the way down through the chakras, then it limits how deep you can sh channel us, how deep we can get into the system. Also, if there is other thoughts that are on the mind at the same time, you should try to free your mind completely when you do a channel. Do a meditation beforehand. Jim completely clears out and makes sure everything is set because it took him a while to learn this, but he makes a preparation for us to come in. And that is to clear out and to make sure that all things are ac accessible and even with the chakras, even if one or two of them might be a little dim, we can still get through because we can brighten that up all the way down. However, if, if you're going through something, an emotional turmoil, where the heart perhaps is blocked or the throat or the, the root chakra is not completely grounded, it makes it more difficult to get all the way into the body in the sense, in the sense of, of connecting up to all the emotions, the intelligence, etc. Because, because we need, need enough, enough access, access to, to, to be free. To be free. Thank Otherwise, you. it limits what we can do. Okay. So, um, some people are just not trans channelers. Uh, so, can I do trans channeling? That is a good question. A good question. When, when we can get all the way through your chakras, you will know. Some people cannot trans-channel because they cannot let go and feel free and safe enough to trans-channel. But they can feel safe and free enough to bring us in for semi-conscious or conscious channeling. Now, now those that are those completely that are trusting, trusting and some that aren't, can trans-channel channel because of the accessibility or the channel that is open. There are certain channels that can be opened that are conducive to trans-channeling, and that would be the one directly behind the crown. Not everyone has that particular channel open. Mostly it's in the front, frontal lobes and in the sides of the heads, but there are those that have been able to access the back of the head be just behind the crown, which is a very uh, strong trans-channel area because it is attached somewhat to the crown area and the crown that controls that. It's, co it's also connected to the soma or the fore eye, fourth eye. So can I get someone to open that for me? Can you open that for me? I cannot. That is something that you must open and um, you must uh, meditate about and see if it will open for you. There are not everyone in this lifetime that, are, that will have that ability. Okay. They will be able to channel, but they may not be able to trans-channel. That is a deeper 
much more involved channel session. Whereas not only your emotions, mind, and body are accessed, but also of all ours are completely accessed with yours. Right. So how can I find out if they have even the the real potential to do it? One moment, please. Thank you. I can see that the the access point for trans channeling in the back of your head, right behind the crown, is somewhat open, but not completely open. Now we can work on opening that up more since it is already started. However, not everyone even has an inkling of it open. Okay, thank you very much. Take care. You're welcome. And a few weeks ago, I channeled. I thought I was channeling you to Holly. Was that you? It was me. Okay. I was not all the way in as correctly as I usually am, but the information got through well enough. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Is there other questions or comments? Please feel free to comment. It might open uh, the door for some other questions. I think it was a wonderful topic comparing different people how we, how open are we for channeling. You know, you can go through others and tell also like, can you compare Jim, entering Jim and entering me? Well, if you try to enter me, what resistance would you get? All right. Let me explain something that happened to Jim a long time ago. When he was very young, he had an illness that almost killed him. And he was under heavy sedation in the second grade. He was under such heavy sedation that his dreams were non-existent. He only saw blackness. But when he woke up, the effects of those two things together had opened several channels in him, but he did not know this. He knew nothing about channeling, and he knew nothing about anything psychic or supernatural. But when he woke up from this particular uh, dark time, he was able to be healed. And someone came in and said, uh, I want to do a healing ceremony for you and his consciousness immediately accepted it but he did not know why it just did and as he went through life they saw this in him and brought him through many different trials and many different difficulties so that he would be sensitive to other people and therefore he is his abilities are different in some ways because of early illnesses and how he was opened as a child and then they never closed he became very sensitive to spiritual things went to spiritual colleges went to spiritual ceremonies and things of nature where people noticed that he was directly involved with the energy there. Now, still, he did not know very much about what was happening until later in his life when we actually just came through. But he has that particular channel open that can be trans-channeled, but he also has several other channel spaces open for different kinds of channeling healing, speaking, trans-channel, there are many things. Can you comment on my chakra structure? What do you feel about me needs to be open and where am I in the development? You are, you are an interesting case because at first you had many doubts about that it even existed, but then you started to get information that was not your own. <clears throat> from outside of yourself, but you challenged the spirits so much, they became unhappy. 
You said, if it doesn't happen by this or that, then I don't think I'm going to believe. That, that was your subconscious. But what happened was that you became sensitive to the fact that healing was happening to you. The healing aspect of it all is actually what opened you up to the other aspects of channeling. And you are now not a trans channeler, but a very conscious channeler. And the reason that you are a conscious channeler is because sometimes it's, it is just your way to be always in control. You want to be in control. And we can use that. It is possible to use that. But if you would let go of control, you could open up other areas of channeling in a deeper way. But you are a, a little bit of what they call a control freak when it comes to your own particular, what you want to be said. You want to make sure that what you are saying is absolutely what is you, you think should be said at that time. And so you control it a little bit. But if you were to let go of that, that you could be used for more messages for a greater deal of information. But not that you are a bad channeler, just a controlling channeler. You understand that? Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Can you analyze my uh, chakra structure? Where is it? Your in channels channel? are in the front lobal system, right in the very front. Uh, on the left side, to uh, uh, one inch behind the ear, and on the right side, one or two inches of in front of the ear. You have three channels open, but you could open about three more. Wow. Thank you. You are welcome. Hello, Dakar. Hello. Christopher, Christopher how are you? How are you? Um, I'm like going in the right direction, Dakar. <laughs> yes. Let me explain something to you. You are very third dimensional in many ways, but yet you are very much in contact with your emotions at this time. Your emotions are working to unleash some of these channel areas. You do have channel areas open mostly on the left side. There's three on the left side are open. I would like to see the one in in the front and the one in the right side open as well. This will balance you out a little bit. However, your third dimension uh, dictates a lot of the things in your life. You have a lot of third dimensional things that you must do. However, in your private times, there are moments when you do channel. When things come to you, the word, you, you hear them in your head or you're not sure what's happening, but you sense it. Is that true? Correct. And therefore, I would like you, when you feel that sensation, to start speaking. I don't care what you say. You can babble anything that you want, but they're trying to break through. You can just babble yes. anything. In, uh, uh, you could say, hi, my name is Christopher, and I am doing this. They want to break through when you're feeling that sensation. They're, they're going to eventually break through because the, you do have a little bit of tension about it. You do have a little bit of the fear of the unknown. And they know that, and th they won't push too hard on those kinds of sensations because they don't want you to be, like, ah, suddenly frightened. But they want you to be relaxed. They want to say something, and when you're going to talk to yourself, you're going to say, you're going to hear something like, I don't be afraid, we're friendly, or whatever it is that they want to say first to introduce themselves. They might give you a name. Well, you already know one of the names of the people that are coming to you, and that's Kin. Kin Correct. is coming to you, and he is exuberant to come to you. You will feel so much joy when he comes into you that it will be amazing. And he is like the, the energy that you had when you were two years old and you were jumping on the bed. So this is the kind of energy Kin will bring to you. And you will be excited and 
you'll probably babble for a little while. So therefore, it's all right. You may not make any sense at first. He's just getting used to your brain, getting used to your chakral system. I'm not sure if Kin comes in physically or not. I have a feeling he only comes into the chakras in the brain. But um, he is really excited to be there. Yes, the Kerr. I can and see him. And he will be him. your first. He will be your first. Yeah, yeah I can see him, the Kerr, when I meditate. And he's there um, all the time. Would you suggest that I speak to him when I see him? Oh, um, sure. Absolutely. Talk to him. Tell him how much you really want him to come through. Ask him to help you. Um, all these different things. He is, he is a kind and gentle creature. He is not going to force his way in. So you just have to give him permission. Give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to give him permission. Because that's where it starts. You give yourself permission to accept someone else into your body, mind, and spirit, so to speak. So give yourself, because you haven't given yourself full permission yet. You know that you want to. Correct. But there is still, still something that's saying, mm, I do not know. So just relax. Breathe deep. Take many deep breaths and then talk to him and say, I'm ready. If you're ready, I'm ready. And then just start talking. Tell him what, say out loud, say, Kin, I'm ready. Um, if you want to come in, uh, I'm open for that. He may not come in right away, but he will hear what you are saying. He will understand what you are doing. With Kin, he's a gentle, loving being, and he won't take advantage of you. I, I, I promise you this. Thank you very much, Takur. You are a loving person as well. You are full of positivity many times. I know you work very hard, but this is a time for relaxation. Let all the troubles of the world go. Let all the thoughts of any other beings, your wife, your children, anything that is happening around the cat, the dog, whatever it is, <laughs> let it all go and just close your eyes and see kin coming in and welcome him. And speak out loud. Speak out loud. Thank you very much, Tucker. You're welcome. I know this will happen for you. It might surprise you how natural it will come eventually because you're trying to picture what it's going to be like. But there's no way to positively know that. It's just you believe that he's friendly, good, loving, and kind, and that the message is coming, and you don't even... You just babble, and some he'll start talking. Wonderful. Hi, Takur. This is Wendy. Yes. Thank you for being here. Oh, was, it is a lovely opportunity. I was wondering if I often feel your energy pretty strongly, and sometimes I feel as if I'm actually... I cannot happy. hear you, dear. Can you speak up? Yes. Can you hear me better now? Ah, that is better, yes. I often feel as if I hear you, like I'm having a conversation with you, and I feel your energy pretty strongly sometimes. And I was wondering if you could confirm that a little bit with me and my what type of channeling abilities that I have. I, I seem to feel very multidimensional. Yes. You are, you are, you see, everyone is a different kind of channeler, and you are one of the different kinds of channelers than anybody else here because where you bring in energy quite strongly throughout your whole body and you are able to channel pretty much anyone that you would like to channel however you do have restrictions that you put on yourself now you may not even know that but in your subconscious you've restricted yourself to X many channels at this time just because you want to get to know the ones that you already have, in a way. Do you understand? Yes, I do. But anyway, yes, I am very strongly with you sometimes. 
and you could channel me anytime you want. Well, thank you. I Do not worry about what the voice sounds like. It is the message that's important. My voice will sound different <sighs> through any person. I am Thanks. just able to use my voice a little better in gym than I can use it in other people. Some people do not have the dynamic range for my voice, and others do. And some people do not have the vocabulary that uh, you have, or Jim has, or someone else has. And so I use as much as your personality as I am able to, to get through the emphasis that I am trying to put on certain words and meanings. Do you understand? Yes, very so much. It will not matter what my voice sounds like, <laughs> but it will matter about the message. So let it be clear that that is the most important thing. Now, some of you are going, well, I could never have Takur come in to me because I don't have that voice. Don't worry about the voice. The voice will come through differently on every single person. There's no way it will come in exactly the same. You all have different vocal cords. I cannot change that. I can change how I come through you. I can, I can manipulate and get through you somehow, but I will not sound like this. I never will sound like this in anybody else because his vocal cords, actually, he doesn't even sound enough like me to be actually <laughs> me, but it is closer than some others. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, it does. And I, I, I'm happy you addressed that because a lot of times when you come to my head, you sound like Jim to me. You come to me in Jim's voice. So I think that's yes. interesting. That it's interesting that you addressed that for me. So thank you. Um, and um, and and through Jim, I've, I, I've understood through a private session about my connections to the Shikani. Um, and I feel them around me. I feel the Yael and the elementals. And I'm just wondering, um, is there a particular direction that I yes. um, am inclined to? The elementals to? have a strong earthly message to bring through you. They are concerned about the earth. They are concerned about many things about how people are living and health issues. The other thing is, yes, there are other species that have other messages, but the elementals have earth messages that are very important, that will come through you and Valerie and, and Bree. And they, they have chosen, all three of you are here today, and that is not by accident. Yes, I understand that I feel a, a connection to both of them as well as Christopher, and I felt a very um, deep connection yes. to Christopher in that, in several ways, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. And then when um, uh, he Jim is, you will find that eventually Christopher will become a very interesting and powerful individual. Yes, I felt that. Not that he's not interesting and powerful now, but it will increase. And Anya and Joanna and all the people that are here, Stan, TC, Safira, Trinity, all of you, all of you are special. All Can of you, you have a reason to be here. And it was no accident that it was this combination. This yeah. is the exact combination that was necessitated for this particular channeling class. Yes, I was very much guided to be here. It was as if I. It was as if it felt I needed to be here. Um, and I wanted to want. Could you please just take a moment to speak about galactic languages and the sign languages that several of us are receiving? Oh yes, good point. The sign languages. Are, yes, you already know they're for the hybrid children and things of that nature. They also help elementals to understand humans more effectively as well. There, there is also a group of aliens that only do sign language. They don't speak. They do mental telepathy. If they are going to speak to another civilization, you must learn their... And you do not have telepathic ability. You must learn their sign language because they do not use their voices any longer. 
They will yes. sign language or telepathically speak to you or psychically speak to you. But if if they can cannot psychically or telepathically speak to you, sign language will be what they use. And if you do not know their sign language, then you are in bad shape. But um, these particular species are in the Galactic Council and do use mostly telepathic and psych psych uh, psychic uh, communication. But there are other uses for the hand language than just the hybridization of hybrid children and the other species and the elementals. It is something that is galactic. These kinds of sign language have been learned on many different planets and can be understood by many different species. And so if they are not translating and you're just doing hand language, they will be able to understand. Thank you very much. Though that validates everything I received from them, in every on every level. Excellent. Is there any more questions at this time before I move forward? Hello, Tucker. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. Anya, how are you? Hello, my love and gratitude goes to you. I am so pleased I can speak with you. I'm pleased to speak with you as well. Thank you. I have a few questions. Um, what is the language that I am speaking sometimes? Can you pick on that? What language do you speak? Is that what you said? Yes, sometimes I'm getting like I'm trying, I'm, I'm just speaking other language. Do you know which language is that? If you speak it, I will be able to know. Okay. Can you speak it for me? Yes. And there is more to that. Ah. Yes, it is a form. It's one of the one of the uh, other Naga languages. It's na the language of the the snake, and it's also um. There is also some connection in there with a reptilian language that I heard as well. But it is a Naga language, one of their major languages. Yes. Do you know why I'm receiving that? Why am I speaking it? I, I cannot hear you. What? Do you know why am I speaking it? Why am I receiving that language? They are definitely feeling connected to you in some way. I will ask the Naga and and one moment please. Kira Wonshua a awa tatariata Sengi Koshua Ashwit Central Wat. They will send a message to the Naga and find out why they are getting in contact with you. But I know the Do Naga are very spiritual. Questions? Yes. Okay. Did you say I don't know. Did you else? hear my last question? Yes. No. Do you know they have any hybrid children? Do you have hybrid children? One moment. I'll ask yes. Sangi. Thank you. Koshua, Anya Koshua, are we attend your words? She will follow you over it anymore. Ah, you have a girl. You have one girl. Do you know her name? Tininit. Tininit. T i n i n i t. Tininit. Do you know with which species is that? She is you yell. You yell. Thank you. She is beautiful. She has purplish eyes. Oh, beautiful. Can she contact me? How old is she? She is not old. She is only about yet your akuriti pisiti, three months old. And you know what? I want to ask you. I want to ask you something. What happened a few months ago? Actually, I was laying down. It took me over a year actually to become who I am right now because I have to release a lot of feelings, negativity. 
and I have been meditating, but at night, one night, I heard voice that they are coming, and actually I was awake, but I felt paralyzed. There were few of them around me. I don't know who was that, but it was kind of scary. And I actually was screaming for Archangel Michael to come and help me, and I felt warmth feeling on my uh, below my belly. Do you know what that was and what happened? One moment, and I will check. One moment. Karwa ondu suits. Sensham fanji ah, Kancho. Not a chuba, a coat of dehois. Kakuba. No, one moment. Ah. You are in the presence of a very strong and powerful species. They meant no harm. They did paralyze you just with their presence and their energies because they are in a higher dimension and their energies are very strong. They just wanted to let you know that they were going to be with you. And when you called on Michael, they let Michael through because he is an energy that they are familiar with. They know him by a different name, but they they realized and recognized the energy. They meant no harm. They just wanted to let you know, know that they were there for you. They see that your future is interesting, and they would like to help you with your growth. They will be back. They will try not to frighten you this time. Are you there? Is anyone there? Yes, I think her yes. internet had an issue quickly, but um, she should be back in a second here. Oh, she just Was, left. Did she hear everything that I said? She might have not heard the very end, so we can... Uh, we can finish that up when she comes back in. But I did have a quick question for you, Tucker. Um, love you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Thank you. This is Bree, and I yes. have been feeling some uh, tingling, and it's almost like an energetic yes. uh, tapping on my head. I, I sometimes. Felt it. I, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's happened. Uh, can I still ask like one or two questions, and I'm gonna go? We do need to stay on the channeling topic. Okay. So no if it is related to channeling, yes. Okay, sounds great. Um, is the car still there? Yes. Yeah. I'm still here. Can you scan... Did you hear the answer to my yes. question? Yes. Good. Can you scan and tell where are the blockages in me or where can I improve regarding my uh, channeling? One moment. You're, you have two channels already open. One is on the right side, and one is near the front on the right side. Uh, just above the eye, but about here. What can I improve to occur? You can continue to meditate, but you are already open for channeling. There is another channel on the left side that is almost open. but. Right. It, you've been through a lot of different difficulties in your past. And yes. this sort of gummed up the work, so to speak. And you're learning how to open up, how to relax, how to meditate and do all these things. As you are learning to do this in a greater way and intending your thought processes to open up, you will definitely become more open. You are on a good path. Is there? You are now... You are now much better than you were by about 82%. Thank you. You still have a little ways to go before you will be channeling, but 
you will be a very clear channel. You see, once you get through all the things that you've been through, it was a very difficult time for you. Yeah. And you will get through this, and it will lift you up because you will get the energy and strength that you need to be who you are going to be. Remember to, when you do your meditations, to, to bring in all those unique things that you are and let go of the things that do not resonate with you because some of those things can jump up and, and interfere with your, your path. But you know what that is. So I'm, I'm just letting you know you are doing very well. Thank you so much, Thakur. Do you know which species? I feel like there is some kind of species around me. They're trying to communicate with me. Do you know which ones are those? And how can I make sure that we can communicate better? Yes. You do have some elementals around you that want to communicate also. But there is a Yuyil being that wants to talk to you about your hybrid child and also has messages for you as well. Do you know their name? Koret. 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 It is a female. Koret. Koret. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody, for allowing me to ask questions. Much love, and thank you. It was a pleasure. Much love to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, I know um, I just had a really quick question. I think um, it should be quick, and then Trinity had one after me. So, um, as I was saying, I've been feeling tingling on certain parts of my head, my skull, um, sometimes on my face, but usually it's on my head, and I'm wondering, um, I've been told that's kind of like you know, my chakras opening or, you know, they're trying to communicate with me. Can you give me any confirmation on that or, like, any way I could help them through if I do start to feel those sensations? One moment, please. It's the throat chakra that I'm concerned about. All the other chakras look, look very well. Um... I need to uh, open up the throat chakra a little more because there are some things you need to say to somebody that you have not said. Um, and when, once this communication has been given, then you will be free of uh, that blockage. And it's not that big, and it's not that great of importance, but there's something there. Do you have any idea what I'm speaking of? Um, no, I don't, unless it has something to do with my parents. Perhaps. But there is communication that needs to be given that is somehow blocking in the subconscious level. So, it, But other than that, you look fine. Those sensations are other aliens and beings that want to communicate through you, and you will have no trouble doing that. There's just something a little bit in the throat chakra that is stopping it. Let me see if I can brighten it for a little bit. One moment, please. Kucha aru e pisicha. Feel the energy come to your throat chakra and to your head and your body. I do not know if you can feel it yet, but it will be there. And it will help you to, whatever that is, it will help release it. Okay. Beautiful. And, Thank you so much. And you are going to be amazing at channeling. You will be. That's exciting to hear. Thank you. May, uh, very bad. Very good. Is there any other questions before I go? I, I need to do an attunement for all of you for for a different uh, an energy attunement for the kinds of channeling that you want to do. If you would like for me to do that now, it will not take long, but it will open up some of your sensory perception toward channeling, get rid of some of your anxieties and fears, 
and make you a little calmer about channels. Would you like me to do that now? Yes, uh, Dr. Kerr, I have a quick question about, yes. if I may ask you a quick question, please. Yes. yes. Um, it's about a, a Naga that has begun to channel with me. Um, he gave me his name, he, he's General Morgan, that he's a general. Um, can you confirm this? Can I confirm that you are channeling General Morgan? Yes, if that's his name. Equal one moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. That is one of his names name. by many. By many. That is oh. the name he chose to use with you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, is he a general among the Naga? He is. Okay. Um, he goes by many titles. General is not a title that they use on Naga, but they use that title on Earth. So right, therefore, right. he's using that title. And Morgan is also not a name that is used on their planet. But he is using that so that you are easily remembering who he is. And for you to remember him is important to him. Not that you know his real name, because you probably wouldn't pronounce it properly anyway, but that you know when he is near you and that you bring him through as General Morgan. I see. Okay. Thank you. Can you please tell me quickly, Takur, if I have any major chakras blocked aside from the one we talked about? How am I doing? Yikawati, Sankuta. There is some, your, your heart chakra should be brightened a little. And you, okay. are, you are, your grounding chakra, the red chakra at the root, needs also a little brightening. But other than that, you're fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. I will give this, I will give this these words these of words. energy of acceptance, acceptance. To, to you because this is something that accompanies channeling is your acceptance of who you are, the acceptance of what you are doing, the messages that you will bring forth, and the love that you are generating as a channeler. Do you realize that when you channel, you do generate love? You generate information, acceptance, inclusion, and all these things. You are are multiverse versatile whenever you channel many different kinds of people who would not ordinarily understand what you are saying will understand messages that are channeled why because they come on many different levels of understanding you may hear it one way but someone else will hear it a slightly different way but it will come to each person the way it is meant to come. And sometimes that may be far different than what you heard it. But yet, it will make an impact in a positive way. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Whereas Max was explaining earlier that sometimes they will give different information, it is actually the same information from different perspectives because some entities measure things differently. You may ask, what is my percentage of Pleiadian? And he got four different answers, or even more, because one group will measure the Pleiadian that was naturally born and is in all parts of the body. Some will measure the past, present, and future Pleiadian, some will measure the vibration that is Pleiadian-related. Does that make sense to you? 
So therefore, it can be many different ways. And they can give you all of those. They can say, oh, the vibrational part is 20%, but the actual DNA part is 17%. And the resonation part in humanity as a whole is 12%, or whatever they are going to say. But they can read it in many different ways. They choose to read it in the way they believe that you mean that they want you to give that information. So this is the same way with channeling in the sense that you will find that the messages that come out from you may be understood in many different ways. Let me give you now the acceptance of your channeling experience. Yakwache wa and ye kwati arata shanta son and a tutra kum woka toward sionji wa undi kutia mir kishi tipo mir kashi mir kashu kosham amoshundi to eretia to mania kor. Please accept the gifts that are given to you. Do not fear them, but embrace them. Love them and let them be a guide to your light path. Let them open your eyes, hearts, minds, and spirits to a greater existence to a greater understanding of who you are as an individual in the universe and on the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all these things that you will allow and all these messages that will become part of your legacy. Because yes, the truth and the information and the spirit that comes forth will become your legacy and tell a story of who you are in the depths of the universe, in the galaxy. Yes, let it all become part of who you are and let it be a positive experience and ground it down through Mother Earth and let it become a flower in your soul. Yoko Chota, Moria Tanya Sapoti, Akio Kushi, Kunshun Chimpitia. Grow with this thought, grow with this understanding, and grow with these messages because they will become part of who you are. The information will be integral to your soul, and it will be in love and in honor of God the great creator, the universe, the energy that never dies. Kashi Mahana Kana Mahana Shamaha. Thank you, Chikur. Thank you. Namaste, Namaste, and I bid you goodbye. Namaste. 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 Hello? Hello? Thank you, Jim. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Well, Max, is there anything else you wanted to say before we go? Yes. Um, thank you for asking. So, after you become a channeler, um, there are a few things keep, to keep in mind. There is a spirit coming from you. I will mute, mute, um, Sefir, I will mute you, unmute when you want to speak, okay? So there is a spirit come to you, and um, as you deliver messages to others, also may, uh, make sure to listen to what it says to you, because your life will be changing a lot. One of my teachers, 
said that as he progressed on his path during the life, he had to kill himself to allow the higher spirit to populate the body. So it doesn't have to be a single time of negative killing, but basically you extinguish a lot of your old identity to get the new one. So not surprising, people get join a new community, become channelers, and then their family life changes radically, their circle of communication changes radically, their profession changes radically. I have been tempted to change a lot of things in my life and I had specific choices, something I wanted to keep and some things I, I had to let go. So be ready for that and listen to that spiritual guidance which you will get. Be guided. Next thing what happens, you as you start shining, as you start becoming popular, lots of people come to you and some people come to you with, I would say, the vibration that doesn't match yours. So you can't really, sometimes you just cannot satisfy everybody. No, not sometimes. Always there will be someone who you don't satisfy as you become a public figure. So there will, be, there will be always some people who would not resonate with you. So develop that muscle, develop that protection, and take it easy. You don't have to be liked by everyone. In fact, you don't have to be liked by anyone. But, you know, get that feedback and build your own niche, your own community. Also, people start sending you huge letters, and these letters are very important for them. And at some point, you might discover that you just cannot read all of those. It's just painful to read some because there is pain there. So you decide for yourself what to do, but basically the trick is use your spiritual eye, your spiritual ability to grasp what is needed for that person and give them the message anyway. You might have to read some, all the letters. You, you might choose to skim them. You might choose to meditate on them. But it's a kind path to send the answer and send the answer in a way that is good for them. I take it easy. I give them, I draw the pictures for people. They write me a letter. I draw a picture and I charge it with my Reiki. So, or write uh, a blessing for them. And the blessing is very personal. So. So, you know, as, as you become a public figure, that would be a big part of your work. Answering people who are on the path of getting, you know, finding themselves, right? And the next thing that happens, um, so you, you join our community, humancolony.org, and you become part of it, you drive it. And then you discover that as you become a channeler, you might want to build your own community. So for building your own community, you don't have to break up with us. <laughs> you can just, uh, like, you know, children leave the family and uh, settle nearby, but they still visit parents and send uh, uh, Christmas presents or whatever presents. Uh, you know, whatever holidays are there. So, uh, yeah, analyze if you really feel rejected and you really have to leave us or maybe you just can build without rejecting. Build your own following, your own site, your own circle without actually separating from us. As I understand, the earth is going to be transformed by these communities. Uh, human colony is the whole Earth. We are a colony of humans from the galaxy. And there will be more communities of higher, dimen higher dimension, higher vibration, higher spiritual understanding. And um, they will, we will be all linked together. And all of us will 
resonate, unite, and shift the Earth to the higher dimension. There will be economic changes. Uh, there will be first local contact with aliens, then open official contact with aliens, and that will change the planet a lot. So unite with local communities of light workers, build your own following. People will come to you with questions and you will have the answer for them. Yeah, see the path in front of you. Reiki and channeling, healing, energy healing and channeling come together. A lot of answers you might give to other people through Reiki without saying a single word. People are telepathic. They claim they are not, but they are. <laughs> they read your mind. So if you got the answer, they will get it too. So the path is clear. We are all on, the, on that path. Every one of us is unique. Every one of us has their own specific message, specific way of channeling. Take it easy. Relax into your future. Relax into your channeling talent. Relax into the spirit. Relax into the unity with the creator. Allah ya na na Allah na 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 Allah Allah na 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 Allah We thank you for co-creation of this class. More classes are coming. I think that would be the future, big, big part of of the effort of uh, the community. The classes and more webinars. Each of us, each of you, we invite you to serve, providing free classes and uh, paid classes. So that becomes a teaching university. Some of that would be free. Some of that would be paid more webinars, more interactions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stepping on this on this path and take it easy. Take it easy. Thank you, uh, our helpers. Thank you, Kathy, for organizing. Thank you, Bree, for organizing. Thank you, <laughs> everybody. Uh, well, Max, and you, yes. Max and Jim, it was so awesome. Thank you so much for both of you for, for being here with us and for us. You're welcome. And thank you for showing your faces. <laughs> what a tremendous <laughs> gift. What a tremendous gift. Thank you all very much. I must go now because I have a client at 3.30 uh, for Reiki. Thank As you, you see, Jim. I put the Reiki table up. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, Thank honey. You, Jim. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Everyone. Max, can we have a copy of that, please? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And Thank I love you. I love you, you all, everybody. and it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. I, my heart's warm when I see my people. When the people are here, I just love it. <laughs> Take care. Talk to you soon, Jim. Talk to you soon, Thank Max, you, and everybody. I love you. I love you. I just want to. I want to give everybody a hug, but it, that's not possible. Hug. Consider okay, yourself hug. hugged. We feel hugged. We feel hugged. You're okay. loved more than you know, Jim. More than I you know. Both love, love you, you very and Max. much. Okay. I gotta bye, go now, so I can prepare. Much love okay, to you, and okay. I hope to see you all soon. So, Bri, you can press button. Okay. okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.